ain't scared. Yeah. Things that go bump in the night. Me. Sam B. Shrunken heads, broken legs, body parts on the concrete. Cut them up, butcher stab, gators in the swamp. Red light, leave them dead, running like a track meet. Scared of nobody, what your motherfuckers want? Believe me when I tell them I'm a boogeyman beast. Leave them slash from their head to their feet. Pin bricks to the chest of a bitch. Well, fed, cooking meat, cannibal, trying to eat. Uh, I got a zombie on me, and you can't harm me. Yeah, who do you, who do, bitch? Drink blood like a vampire without warning. Who do you, who do, bitch? Stand up. Sam B got the thing that go bump in the night. Whoa, who do you, who do, bitch? Hide your kids, grab your wife. And... What's up, guys? What's going on? It's Voodoo here, along with. Brandon. Brandon, yes. <laughs> Brandon, yeah. <laughs> um, welcome to episode 13 of Voodoo's Brew. Uh, we're currently live streaming this right now over on Ustream. It's the first time we've live streamed an episode. Um, we're doing it live. We're doing it live. That's right. Voodoo's Brew live. Pretty cool. Yeah. So um, this is a big episode. This is going to be our E3 2013 recap we're going to be going over the four major press conferences that was that were held on monday um which were microsoft ea ubisoft and sony in that orders um we're gonna be talking about them breaking it down and giving you our thoughts are you excited yes, you pumped up it's gonna be fun. Uh, yes i am pumped. it's gonna be amazing e3 all right so, because this is going to be a long episode, we're going to go ahead and just quickly jump right into it with the first press conference, which was a big one. It was Microsoft. Um, and they opened the press conference with a trailer for Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain, it's called, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and it was a pretty cool trailer. It was the snake, whatever his name is in this one. And uh, it was like a western thing, right? Yeah, western and like they're in like in the desert riding horses, and it looked like it was like him and some yeah, other dude. There was somebody, and you know, just else. talking and riding. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure who it was. And they showed like a bunch of stealth gameplay of uh, like you know going on the side of his horse and stuff like that. Yeah. So basically, they're promising that this will have um, changing climate and weather, so it'll change over time. It'll have unparalleled strategic freedom, so you can do like you can uh, play it however you want, like stealthy or you know running gun, I guess. Um, it's gonna have a realistic passage of time, so it's gonna be like you know how the day actually goes. Um, dynamic close quarters combat. So yeah, basically they're having you know they're promising a lot of cool shit. Yeah. <laughs> for this uh, new MGS. I guess like I don't know if this was the announcement that it's also going to be on Xbox because previously Metal Gear was always PlayStation. I don't uh, know. They if... Actually, there was like, uh, I think there was Me Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance. Um, it's kind of like a like an extension of the actual campaign and they actually had, a, I think, like one or two of those on the, the original Xbox. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so this isn't like the first time they've ever been on X Xbox, but it's their, right. like first time back, I guess. So the point is... Basically, it's going to be on Xbox One. So right, right. Yeah. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, the graphics look really yeah, good on good. it. It looked and real uh, good. the you know the gameplay looks fun too. So yep. All right. So next, Brandon. So the next thing they they pretty much introduced us with was the new Xbox 360. Um, and basically, they're saying that. With, like they're showing the new design of the Xbox 360 and how like they've based it on the Xbox One design, which is really shitty. But um, <laughs> uh, and then they also said that um, Xbox Gold members are going to have this special thing where they get two free games per month, um, every month. And the first two games that they're going to be giving the Xbox Gold members are Assassin's Creed 2 and Halo 3, which I think is pretty cool. They give you three games. Um, who doesn't like free games? Yeah. But the new why would anyone buy a new Xbox 360 is beyond me. Yeah, I don't. Y when there's these new consoles coming out, but I don't know what the point of that is. It's, I don't either. <laughs> there is I mean, no point. I don't know who's looking to buy a new Xbox 360 right now. Like, 
I mean, I'm trying to save up for an Xbox One. Yeah. Or, I mean, I'm not really Xbox One, <laughs> but if you're like an Xbox fan, you're you're saving right. up for an Xbox One. So strange, but the uh, the free games thing I think is a is a counter to PlayStation Plus because uh, they yeah, do that actually, right yeah. now. They give free games every month. Yeah. Um. So I think it was Xbox's like attempt counter to doesn't. counter. Right. Uh, Sony, but as far as the new Xbox 360, a new model, it's completely worthless. There's no point. <laughs> yeah, waste, wasted their time. <laughs> that was a waste of time. Um, so then they moved on and talked about something else. It's like okay, you know, it's whatever. Um, the game World of Tanks, which is I guess a very popular PC game right now. I don't know, but yeah, basically um, they said it has like five million players or something like that. Yeah, it's apparently really big online. Um, Mm -hmm. It's going to be on 360. It's going to be free for uh, Xbox Gold members. So if you're a member of Gold, you can play World of Tanks for free. And I guess this is, yeah, I guess it's like new for consoles too. It's uh, it's never been on console. It's going to be on a console. Right. That's pretty cool. Um, And the next thing uh, that they kind of brought up was Max the Curse of of brotherhood i think it's called yeah. and it was a it's let's guess it's an indie game that's developed by some studio in copenhagen denmark copenhagen um, yeah copenhagen and uh i guess the gameplay consists of you like going through these different levels and you're drawing your own way to complete the levels so mm-hmm. i saw them like draw vines and bridges and uh and i guess the point of the game is to save your brother <laughs> yeah he like uh the beginning of the game was like he wished his brother would go away or something like that and he did right right yeah and he has to go into this alternate world to save him uh it looks like a little puzzle platformer thing yeah Yeah. it looks pretty cool yeah it's like a cartoony uh you know game yeah um so after that basically side scrolling yeah yeah it's just like a little sky side scroller game Mm -hmm. um so after that they showed off a trailer for dark souls 2 um it looks very similar to dark souls 1 as far as Mm -hmm gameplay um so nothing kind of dark souls yeah nothing really new here just they didn't really say anything else about it they just um showed the trailer yeah they just showed the trailer so uh it really wasn't anything great yeah and so the next thing they brought up was um i guess the this is the starting point of showing all the new games for xbox one Mm -hmm. um so and they they basically announced that this is they're having um, more titles in development ever, like than they've ever had in Xbox history, which is really, um, I guess, really cool. It's like fifteen, right? Yeah. Um, so that's cool. That's uh, that's a cool thing that they're doing. Um, and then after that, they they kind of like uh, they they started this trailer for um, a new game called Rise: Son of Rome. Um, it was kind of like a uh, CGI trailer, and they kind of uh, uh, were showing this guy, like, um, I guess it's like statue that was getting broken into pieces, and it was showing, like, uh, the city and all this different stuff. And then they actually had people come out and start playing the game and showing off gameplay. Um, and this game is being developed by Crytek, which is why the name, um, its name Rise has a Y in it instead yes, of an I. they're so edgy. Yeah, they're so so original um mm-hmm. and basically it looked like this game had a lot of quick time events uh during yeah. the combat and uh, i have to say it does look pretty cool from what they showed us yeah uh it looked pretty good this is like a big selling point this is a an exclusive to xbox one this looks um, like it's gonna be like one of the flagship uh launch or titles for the xbox one like right. why people why people would kind of really consider buying it yeah um Gameplay wise, I to me it looked very similar to like a God of War, um, free flowing, you know, uh, melee combat with like the quick time events for finishers. Mm-hmm. Um, do you but remember? They did, it, huh? I guess was it actual gameplay that they showed, or was it just like a a trailer? Oh no, no, it was actual gameplay. Okay, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. They they were. He was fighting some people, and then they 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 went into like a phalanx, and they were charging this wall, and uh, right. they were shooting arrows. The other the enemies were shooting arrows at you, and you had to throw spears back at them. It looked um, really cool. That part looked really cool. 
yeah, it looked really cool. Um, so it could be really good. Um, yeah, or it and, could uh, be another generic hack and slash. You know, there's no uh-huh. way to tell. Um, but really, it looks like it definitely had potential. Right, and uh, all we know is it's going to be available at launch. So right, so that's that's a big, uh, big thing there for Xbox to have that game uh, as an exclusive. It's made by Crytek, though. Um, yeah, so their campaign, their stories aren't really that you know in depth. They're not really known for their stories. They're basically known for the graphics. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing for them to be doing because you know you 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 put them with Crisis. Um, right. And, you know, when you've got one of their head guys making a quote uh, a couple months ago, basically coming out and saying, yeah, well, we at, Cry- at Crytek believe that graphics are 60% of the game, which means mm. that gameplay and story are less than half of a game. I don't really trust that developer, but, you know, right. that's just me. So, um, but it, it, it did look good. So, yeah, um, no, it did. It looked fun. It looked like it's going to be interesting to yeah, see what, what it looks it, like a good launch out. title. I think it's a strong mm. launch title. Um, so what came up next was something that has been creating some buzz the past couple of days, some controversy. Um, Killer Instinct is coming back. Um, this is a very old fighting game series from the 90s. Um, apparently people have been asking for Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct to come back. And Xbox One announced that it is coming back. They showed a quick trailer for it. Um, and it's going to be an Xbox One exclusive, which is kind of odd for a fighting game. Um, right, because uh, basically how you know fighting games work in tournaments, in the tournament scene, is they like have the, both versions of it, so they can have you know people playing a certain version and then you know practicing on that, and then you know actually entering in a tournament. So right. when you only have one t- one version of the game, you can't really use it in a tournament. Um, but yeah so i mean for people who like to kill instinct who wanted it to come back this is a big deal for them i guess um for people who don't like fighting games or for people who aren't old enough to remember killer instinct this is really not that big of a deal i don't think right um but it is a notch for them that they that they have it yep uh and they actually followed that up with an insomniac game for the xbox which, which is uh, weird which is really weird and uh this game is called sunset overdrive and basically it's going to be an open world shooter um it's going to act and they said it's going to be like a living world so it's going to be different every time you play it i guess yeah. um it look, looked like there's some parkour in it uh it looked really quirky a lot of like quirky humor in it um so yeah, and, and it's gonna. It looks like it's possibly gonna be a co-op game because some of some of the characters that were like sliding mm-hmm. down the rope had the names above the player. So it looks like it's gonna be a co-op open world game. Um, looks interesting, but weird that it's an Insomniac game for the Xbox. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. An Insomniac exclusive. It's an Xbox One exclusive. Right. So um, um, not really sure how to feel about that. Really kind of crazy. Like I don't know. That was just weird seeing Insomniac doing a exclusive for xbox but um yeah it kind of looks like a mix between like a borderlands and i i hate to say this and i i don't mean this in a negative way but it kind of reminded me of brink a little bit because Mm -hmm. of the the graphics and like the free flowing uh, like running across buildings and doing crazy stuff like that which is kind of yeah the what was the big promotion thing of brink was like that free-flowing jumping over things um you know fluidly and mm-hmm. it kind of reminded me of that uh, but the yeah look, yeah the graphics look really interesting on it though they yeah really, it's, uh, it's cool. like a cartoony kind of graphic style um it's not heavy cell shaded like borderlands but you know yeah um but that's a game that could be interesting as well I'm not sure if it's going to be a third person or a first person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if they said it or didn't. But... It looked like a third person to me, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, so then they came out and talked about Forza 5, um, <laughs> always been a, a Microsoft exclusive. So uh, it, <laughs> this starts the theme of uh, <laughs> many driving games. Yeah, a lot of driving games. We're going to talk about some of the themes of this E3, and driving games was one of them. Right. Um but they talked about something a little interesting to where 
it was this thing called a drive avatar mm-hmm. and like it learns how you drive so like it as you race and as you uh you know you know basically as you play the game and you drive around and race the game kind of learns how you turn corners how you pass people up how you do certain things and mm-hmm. it remembers like your driving style and then i guess like if one of your friends goes on to play um when they race or something like they they could be racing against ai but it they could also be racing against other people's drive avatars which are still ai but they drive like the human player drives right. um so but, yeah it's an interesting concept you just gotta wonder how well it's gonna work <laughs> yeah but uh, like what if somebody really sucks at driving <laughs> right did you really want your you really not want to improve on your game and have your drive guitar f- drive for you when you drive like crap i mean right. i don't know yeah that's that's the thing like uh it'll drive like a human so i mean i guess it's cool in the in the fact that like it'll be a more realistic kind of driving unlike the ai who drives like perfectly right, um, right. which can be really annoying in racing games but I mean, it's an interesting concept. I've never heard of anything quite like that. Yeah, it sounds really cool. I mean, it sounds like it could be useful if you're really good and you want you want to race like all day when you're at school or something. But right, but I mean, I if you we'll suck, see I guess uh, I don't know how suck, it's gonna work. Yeah, if you suck, I guess uh, that's not gonna be a very good deal for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I guess they're saying they're gonna have hundreds of cars, so like you know they're gonna be adding more cars to it and all that cool stuff. Yeah, if you and like then, Forza, you should like Forza 5. Right, if you're a fan of the Forza series, Forza 5 is going to be your game. Yeah. Um, so after that, they, they followed up with um, Minecraft Xbox One Edition. Uh, so I guess this is um, like the successor to the Xbox 360 edition of Minecraft. Um, they're saying it's going to have more you know, maps, I guess more like space to roam, because I guess in, Xbox, in the Xbox 360 edition, they only had a, like a certain... Um, amount of area you could cover until it like kind of held you off because of the limitations of Xbox 360. But with the new Xbox One, you're gonna have, I guess, unlimited like the PC, um, which is cool for Minecraft fans. Yeah, I, so. I enjoy playing Minecraft once and once once in a while. So Minecraft fans uh, rejoice. You yes, know, there's not much to say here. It's Minecraft, you know. So it's good old Minecraft. If yeah. you like Minecraft on 360, you're gonna have it on Xbox One. So great. So that was that. Um, then they came out and showed more about the game Quantum Break, which I really wanted to see because the what they showed of it at the Xbox One reveal was very ambiguous and strange. Um, so they came out, they showed another trailer for it um, where basically these two would seem like detectives or something go into a building and there's this big explosion and time is like frozen. Mm-hmm. I guess the uh, the the male lead has the ability to like freeze time, and there's a woman who's being caught in the explosion, and uh, the guy walks around for a little while. He's, he's he's looking at stuff. He's trying to see you know I guess what happened, what went wrong, and he he grabs the woman, and like pulls her out of the explosion, um, into like their time, so where she's like you know back moving around and everything else is still frozen right. and then the woman is like the woman who's the other detective is is like oh it's unstable it's collapsing or something and then i guess it blows up um i mean it looked like he had to hold onto her arm for it yeah. to work like he had to continuously hold her arm yeah he was um, holding her and like pulled her he like right. pulled her out of it but i guess he couldn't let go or else it would like break the loop or something yeah. Um, but so was this they went back in time right to save this chick like they already knew this was going to happen so they went back uh, I don't remember to be honest with you I don't I, I, I think that was a premise of it I think they went back to save this girl because she had something like if she lived it would like change oh yeah something. yeah yeah um, and I guess in, in this like in this game it's going to be like it's going to coincide with like a, a, a TV show yeah it's going to work with a TV show um, I don't and, I didn't quite catch like when this TV show is going to start, or yeah, I didn't either. Where it was going to be, so. Um, but I guess the choices you make in the game will actually change the TV show, uh, TV show story, which is really cool. I never, I mean, I, uh, that uh, what was it? The 
was it Defiance that came Defiance out? Defiance was yeah, it worked with the TV show. Yeah, but I heard it was really shitty. So right. Hopefully this does it right, and like hopefully it's like interesting. Yeah, um, it could be cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying. I mean, it could be really cool. Like if you're if you enjoy the show and the game, like it's like a win win, mm-hmm. and you you get right. to create your own story, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool idea. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, uh, yeah, so and it's gonna be an Xbox exclusive, and it looks really cool. Yep. And then um, after that, they they came out with this. I almost thought it was like a a, a sequel to Catherine, kind of <laughs> like that style. Yeah. Of game. Um, this game's called D Four, and I guess it's gonna be an episodic murder mystery. And I I was really like this uh, really like caught my eye. I was like, wow, this looks really cool. Like it look, looked like it's gonna be a downloadable thing, mm-hmm. like um, how The Walking Dead worked with the episodes and stuff. Um, and I guess the director of this is going to be Swear Sweary Six Swear Sixty Five, yeah, yeah, some weird ass name. <laughs> um, I was like, I was so interested in it, and then like this 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 thing popped up on the screen, and it looked like you had to move your hands. I'm like, this is going to be a connect yeah. connect game. I'm like, oh big, shit, <laughs> big ass disappointment right there. Big ass disappointment. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> so uh, that's not even a possibility for me to get <laughs> if yeah. I ever got an Xbox. I would. I'm not going to get a connect game. I mean, that's I'm just not into the whole connect thing yeah. so um if this turns out to be a connected game it's going to ruin the whole series for me um i will not be buying it <laughs> if i ever do end up buying an xbox but uh, it looked interesting until the connect pop on the screen yeah it's called d4 right d4 episodic murder mystery yeah cool graphical style shitty control schemes <laughs> <laughs> um so well Maybe people can hope that you know it'll just have Connect features and won't, the whole game won't be Connect controlled. But right, right. or anyway. maybe you could turn off the Connect uh, Connect controls and just play the controller. Right. You don't know. Um. So the next thing they showed is kind of like a quirky thing. It was called Project Spark, mm-hmm. and <laughs> it looked kind of. I mean, it wasn't Media Molecule, but it looked like a Media Molecule game. Um, yeah. Looked like it'd you, come from their brains. Yeah, where you basically had this environment that you can create um they were in like a a village and they had a couple of guys and they were of course using like smart glass and stuff and they were like oh um i don't know this guy this kid was there and they were like oh let's give him a pet rock so they gave him (laughs) a rock and the rock followed him and then um they they said oh let's make a rock man so they turned the rock into a man and then like they were getting attacked by this big thing of orcs was right. like attacking their village or something and he's like oh orc or the rock man transforms into rock mech and he becomes this giant mech like <laughs> creature um but the two of them were playing like co-op and one guy was creating uh on like smart glass he was like creating a uh like hills and stuff for him to go on he's like oh i'm gonna go up high and scout the battle area or whatever and he Mm. like you know created a little hill and went up the hill and um yeah so basically you could just you you um can morph the land around you like make rivers and uh mountains and you know just make it different like completely different than the way it looks uh and i guess you can like have like an arctic and woodlands like type environment so like you can change the whole like environment in like a matter of seconds yeah they were Um, uh talking about like uh they were given voice commands like right yeah make through it connect through make connect. it snowy or make it yeah so use this connect uh you know i don't know how people feel about that i don't know if it's, people actually like that i mean it's i don't a, it's like it's kind of a peripheral bullshit game it's like right. oh we got right. smart glass we got freaking um basically yeah. just to bring everything together uh, yeah we got smart glass we got connect we got all this peripheral nonsense if you like that and you like that media molecule kind of creativity um Project cool. Spark is for you, I guess. Right. I mean, it does have a cool little features where you can change the world around you, and um, you know, you can you can actually pick the enemies that you fight, which is right. cool. But you know, I mean, it's really cartoony and it's kind of like a, a kind of like a kitty game to me. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyway, well. um, but it does look pretty cool. Um, and oh yeah, yeah, actually, this is why it reminded me of Media Molecules because you can um. You can actually make it into like a side scroller or a, a shooter, or a, um, you can turn it into like all these different things, like mm. you could do in in uh, Little Big Planet. So yeah. that really reminded me of Medium Molecule. Um, so yeah, uh, so they followed that up with um, 
this like they kind of said smart glass gives you a deeper experience you can you can compare it to your friends like you can compare compare like different uh, games to your friends like how you're doing compared to your friends on smart glass which nobody's going to use um, and then they then they announced you can record your game clips uh, with the Xbox um, and you can actually record commentary through the Kinect mm -hmm. which is cool and you can actually um, edit your videos in the Xbox so basically it's like a, a capture card <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, and you can actually broadcast to Twitch TV instantly which is a really cool feature um, uh, Sony Sony's last conference they really didn't make clear how you could do it with the Sony right with the PS4 um, and they kind of and Microsoft kind of just told you blatantly it's going to be instant and it's going to switch stream to Twitch. Uh, and then they're actually changing Microsoft points to real money, which is... Uh, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, thank God. Because Microsoft you can have, points were never made sense to me anyway. I still don't know how what how they um, could, you know, divvy that up into real money. I still don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, I never did. <laughs> yeah, I still don't. Uh and you can actually have all the friends you want now. You're not limited to 100. And you can share your gold membership, I guess. It's like gold sharing. Yeah. So that was like a little section where they just like announced all this like these little features right. that, that the Xbox One is going to have. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that came out of that was the uh, the Twitch live streaming. Because mm -hmm. Twitch is definitely the, the leader in streaming gameplay. Um, right how well it's going to work and what kind of internet connection you're going to have to have to stream to Twitch in HD, I presume. Um, I, I think a lot of people probably don't have good enough internet to do that. but uh, You might be able to tweak your settings on it. Maybe so, but you can stream to Twitch and your commentary is through Connect. I really don't know how that good that's going to be. I don't know how good the Connect is going to be. At recording voice, I don't know how good of a microphone it's got. Um, Still a cool feature. Um, it's cool. I but I think we're gonna have to see how it's gonna work. I think. Oh well, yeah, right. You right. Know, and I think there's gonna. I think Twitch is gonna get overloaded with <laughs> everybody who buys an Xbox One trying to stream, and I think they're gonna have to deal with some issues around the launch of the Xbox because I think they're they're gonna have a ton of people jumping on Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, to try to stream, but it was a it was a big thing, especially since Sony said that they were with UStream. Um, UStream's right. not as big as Twitch for games, so. Oh no, no, Twitch is yeah. like the leading. Right, definitely. Um, then they showed a trailer. This was pretty funny. Um, another theme of this E3 was technical difficulties. Yes. Um, so they showed a game, which, to be honest, I don't know that much about because it was kind of hard to pay attention to the trailer. Um, <laughs> the game was called Crimson Dragon, but the whole trailer played without sound. Yeah, so basically the developer of this game got royally fucked. <laughs> yeah, there's no sound. And because of that, I honestly can't even tell you what it is. I don't even remember I, what I, it is. I, I, it was like a dragon game where you're like flying and fighting other dragons, and I don't know, it looked really, it didn't look like that great of a game to me. I, I was going to be laughing because there yeah, was this, no sound. Yeah, and there's this guy yelling in the back, yeah, this looks amazing. Yeah, the there crowd. were people trolling him and stuff, like screaming at him. Because <laughs> there was not... no sound. Um, and they, this would continue, there would be continuous technical difficulties. Oh, yes. Tons. So, so after that fail, um, <laughs> um, they actually uh, announced Dead Rising 3, which is the uh, third installment of the Dead Rising series, um, the zombie zombie open world I don't know if you'd consider open world but like the zombie free roam game um and it looks pretty freaking cool to me um yeah it looks there was good. like yeah they like started off with like showing the new main character I guess um he looks like a Hispanic male uh they didn't really give they really didn't give his name so Brandon's I, a I, police officer he's a yeah, Hispanic they, male 6'3 250 pounds. 6'3", has tons of weapons on him, uh, <laughs> killing, killing zombies. Giant chainsaws. <laughs> um, I really didn't catch the name of the character. Um, and it looked like he was in like a residential neighborhood, mm -hmm. like walking through the neighborhood. And I guess huh, like the main like like a new feature of this game is you can just create new weapons like on the fly. Like you don't need to right. go to like a create creation what do they call it, like bench or something like that? I don't know because I've never played Dead Rising. Me either, so I'm just going to call it a bench. Um, 
But yeah, it's like so basically it's instant like you can create a, a new weapon instantly. You can like add like things you find around the world like uh you can like if you're carrying a flashlight you can just attach it to your gun instantly and uh, all that cool stuff. Um the indoors area was really cool where he had his flashlight on. He was like shooting all the zombies in there. Yeah. <laughs> and the sound sounded like really cool too. Um so yeah, basically it's just going to be open world, no load times, they said. There's going to be no load times during this game. Um and you can create all these like hundreds of weapons, um, customize them all, and and actually, there's a part where he's driving, and zombies still can get you while you're driving. Like, yeah, in other games where you drive, like it's basically you just run them over, and uh, that was the end of it. But these zombies can get, grab onto your car and like pull you out and like start like beating the shit out of you, <laughs> and <laughs> it looked really cool. So th- this game is is another game that would like make me consider buying an Xbox if yeah. it turns out like a, a good game. Dead Rising Three looked pretty cool, and um, at the end, they they assured you that the craziness would still be there, and there was like a big horde of zombies, and he was using this chainsaw thing and going crazy and right cutting up a bunch of zombies and throwing stuff at them. And uh, oh yeah, there was a part where he uh like he had a like a sword or something like that, and he he threw it and it cut a zombie like straight in half. Yeah, <laughs> cut it straight in half. That was that was awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I believe that no load time thing. I guess we'll have to see, but. Yeah, I mean, if they have that, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, if they I have it, it's a good feature, but... I mean, that's what they're saying, so... Right. I mean. Um, So then they showed off uh, The Witcher 3, which I guess is going to be actually out on consoles at the same time as PC this time. Um, But, again, it looks like The Witcher. Um, It looked hmm. good. They didn't really talk about how difficult it was going to be or anything like that they just showed a trailer for it um right. and it looks like the witcher i don't know i didn't watch i didn't play witcher one or two so i don't know really anything about witcher but uh, from what i yeah. saw of witcher 2 it looked similar right um so i guess i guess witcher 2 was like such a big success on pc or something like that they brought it to xbox right um like for the first time there's like witcher at first time ever on xbox and uh I guess they're promising that this new Witcher is going to have like deeper combat and it's going to have like DX11 graphics and free roaming open world environment, um, optional voice commands, uh, like so you could like yell at cats like blah blah blah, <laughs> like it'll, it'll actually come out while you're playing, and um, it's going to have. They said it's going to be like an epic fantasy RPG, so yeah. it sounds it sounds cool if you're a fan of The Witcher and uh, you played the last one and you loved it, so. Yeah, it's. I'm sure it's gonna be the same with amazing graphics like Witcher Two had, and right. Um, it's probably gonna be pretty good. So, mm-hmm. and then after that, they followed up with the first mention of Battlefield Four, um, oh, the, the new the new FPS uh, destructible environment game from uh, EA and Dice. Um, they showed. They said it's gonna have the new Frostbite Three engine. It's gonna be running at 60 frames per second, which is really cool. Um, for bad, like for any FPS game on console, that's why I guess Call of Duty was like so well, well liked because it was such a smooth frame rate. Um, so they're bringing that to consoles for Battlefield, and I guess this trailer they showed was the Angry Sea level where they're like on a like a f- ship or something like a warship. And uh, actually, before they actually got to start the trailer, <laughs> there's like this audio. There's like this video like fuck up where they they couldn't get the video so the guy standing out there was like all awkward he's like uh, yeah he's just standing there yeah we're like uh, we're having some problems so he's like walking backstage like are we still doing this uh, yeah like the whole thing crashed yeah like, he was trying to walk he was, he was trying to get off the stage like he didn't want to be up there <laughs> he's like uh I don't know if we're still he's like uh I guess you'll see the trailer later and everybody starts yeah. booing like crazy yeah like boo and then he's like oh I guess we're still doing this and like the trailer pops on. And it shows the the char- like the main characters of the game. I guess it's gonna be like uh, you and like three under squ- other squad mates. Yeah. Um, and they're running through like this command section of the ship, and they're like just blowing everything up, like like you would expect from Battlefield yeah, games, like much. explosions and bolts flying by your face. And it looked really the graphics were really good. Uh, it's like it looks like a beautiful game. It has sixty frames per second, so it's gonna look even better. Um, but it's like how are you supposed to get attached to? Like characters from a trailer when it's an FPS game, like they can't really show you a single player trailer of an S- FP- yeah. F- FPS game and you get attached to a character. But um, I guess it was just to show off the graphics and uh, new capabilities at the 60 frames per second. Yeah, they had like a 
there was a, a part where like a section of the ship collapsed and they had like fighter jets like yeah you know, flying off the ship and yeah that, that part um, looked cool um it was it was a cool trailer um gameplay just, looks yeah. like a first person shooter i mean honestly i don't know why they add a single player portion of battlefield it's like call of duty does it and they do it better than you guys so why even bother but you yeah, know they I don't want know. they they it it's, it looks like a first person shooter. It just looks like you run around and shoot everything in sight and blow shit up. But right. I guess it's gonna look good and feel good while you're doing it. Yeah, it's gonna be beautiful to look at while you blow people's heads off. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and I guess after that they announced that Battlefield, which is really weird. I don't know why they did, but Battlefield's gonna have their first map pack on Xbox One first. Um, so they're following the same thing as Call of Duty, where they're releasing exclusive map like exclusive map packs first on xbox yeah even um, though I, battlefield 3 they they had it on ps3 first but right i i don't understand i guess it didn't do good like it didn't do well for them or on sales or something but i don't know um they just announced it and i i guess they feel it's the best decision so yeah well we'll see i'm sure they did because xbox probably threw them a ton of money right um, yeah. so then there was another little game that they showed i guess it's it kind of has that downloadable feel um called what lies below mm -hmm. and it was like it wasn't that long of a trailer no um, but i don't i don't even remember that much about it but uh basically it's it's by the guys that made um super brothers sword and sorcery it was like an iphone game and it like won a ton of awards because it was like really original and yeah had a lot of cool so i guess this is our first outing on console um I don't. I, I mean, it looks cool. I mean, you know, it looks like a little little indie game that lo looks like could be fun to just you know sit down and relax and play. Yeah. Um, not sure like how much of a story it's gonna have or what what like what along the lines they're gonna have like that like gameplay and stuff. But I don't know. It looks it looks interesting. Yeah. And then after that, after they uh, revealed below, they Black Tusk Studios um, comes out and they show they show like this it kind of reminded me of like devil may cry like it had a devil may cry feel mm -hmm. and it shows this guy like holding a gun and it goes inside the gun shows a tr chamber and all the like mechanics of the gun and shows a bullet in the chamber and it fires and then that's it there's like no yeah name of the game or anything it was just just a little like i guess tech demo they're showing i don't know what they're but they're yeah, it was like, trying to show there. It was like, I don't know. They were just like, oh, we're working with this new studio, Black Tusk. Yeah. And there was no game name or anything like that. It was just, oh, they're making a game. Okay. Yeah, they're, make, they're making a game and their name's Black Tusk. Right. <laughs> here's, um, here's the trailer of it. So then what, ha what happens? Of course, everybody knew this was going to happen. <laughs> this was not anything new um they show a trailer and it starts off with this person in a big like burlap hooded robe thing trench coat looking thing yeah walking in the desert it seems like it's like journey or something yeah yeah dude it, it looked like journey and he's walking along and all of a sudden this giant thing like pops out of the ground this giant <laughs> alien ship and it looked like the earth was collapsing on itself. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. <laughs> and then the person throws off the hood, and it's Master Chief. So oh. they basically said that there's going to be another Halo for Xbox One. Big deal. Right. They didn't even give a name. They just said there's going to be Halo. Yeah, it just says Halo 2014. <laughs> right. So there's going to be another Halo. No one's surprised by this. This is... You know. It was cool the way they, they revealed it, though. Like, it kind of left you guessing, like, what what the frick is this? And then all of a sudden he took the hood off. Yeah. It was a little and disappointing it, to me, though, because I was like, oh, this looks kind of cool. What's it going to be? Oh, it's another Halo. <laughs> oh, it's another fucking Halo. <laughs> I was wondering when they were going to do this. Here it is. So. <laughs> and, of, and, of course, it's going to be developed by 343 Industry Studios. Right. And um, they're actually saying it's going to be in 60 frames per second, which seems like it's going to be, like, a running theme of the new co consoles. Is, like, yeah, for the first the, time. Yeah, the first time in 60 frames, it's going to be, like, blistering, blisteringly amazing looking. <laughs> um, so it's cool. Like, they're upgrading the frames, which is was, like, right. a downside to consoles in the earlier generation. Or the current generation, I mean. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
And uh, then, <laughs> and then <laughs> after this the big reveal of the new Halo that's doesn't have a name. Um, it doesn't have a name. They come out. Then the this guy comes out and says, "So we're proud to announce that the Xbox One will be in markets in November, and it will be retail for four hundred and ninety nine dollars." <laughs> and everybody was like, like, "What, what the, the fuck?" fuck? <laughs> I'm like five hundred dollars for this thing. Five hundred dollars for this ugly piece. Of, I mean, this uh, this console. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, the reason it's so expensive is because they package their stupid Connect, right. which is mandatory to use the console. Which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Um, um, so yeah. So uh, a very high price point for Xbox very, One. Um, very high price. Coming in November. So. There you go. We know that it has a 500 uh, megabyte hard drive, um, mm-hmm. and there's only one model of it, uh, and it's $500. So you better <laughs> so get those... your wallets out, and you better be ready to pay an additional $60 a year if you want Xbox Live Gold. Um, it's this, you know, they still have the same thing, and uh, it's still $60 a year. And they did say the Xbox Live Gold is going to carry over. Um, if you have it now, how generous of them! Yeah, great. <laughs> um, when you get the Xbox One, it'll carry over. Um, so the last thing that they finished the press conference with, and then we'll talk a little bit about the conference and and some important things that they didn't talk about at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing they showed was the game Titanfall from Respawn, and Respawn is made up of the what used to be Infinity Ward, who made the original Infinity Ward. Um, who made Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1. Right. And they showed Titanfall. Um, they It was basically a... Uh, I don't think... This isn't where they showed... Was this where they showed the demo of it? Yeah, this was the or first time they showed EA, it. Or was it the EA... No, that's, that's that they showed the that's, demo. No, they actually didn't show the, the this, like first reveal this demo in the EA. They showed it here. Yeah, okay. So they showed a demo and it was like a um a co op demo and there was I mean it it's it's just like a sci fi shooter. Right. Um and basically they they it looks like they're trying to morph morph like the single player and multiplayer together. Right. <laughs> Which is that's what it looked like to me. So it's like a combination of I see in my head I'm getting it confused with Destiny, but Oh no! Yeah, Titanfall. Yeah, I'm I'm on the right path now. Yeah. Um, it's well, like a combination of like it's a shooter, and then there's mech gameplay. Right. And yeah. they were showing like a multiplayer thing, I guess. And they were uh, the the player was running around and getting kills and stuff, and called it. There, it, it seems like if you get a certain amount of points or you wait a certain amount of time, you unlock a titanfall where they drop this giant mech onto the uh battle surface that you can get into and control Mm -hmm. um and it was pretty crazy people were running around shooting each other there people were in these giant titans i guess and they were fighting each other um it looks pretty cool and you know the the consensus is that modern warfare one for call of duty was multiplayer wise the best one ever right so and so yeah, if seems, they can recreate that in this game, it might be pretty sweet. Yeah, so it seems like these guys know what they're doing when it comes to multiplayer. So hopefully it carries over to this game. Right, and this is an exclusive for Xbox One. Um, oh, I, well, actually, we I thought we got word that it might come to... Well, PS4. there was an article released today where the, I guess, Respawn came out and said that they wouldn't be opposed to uh, moving it to PlayStation like later down the line. Like, it wouldn't launch for PlayStation, but... Okay like a, a year or two down the line it might come over so okay. for now it's an xbox one exclusive at least when it launches okay um yeah. so that's you know that i think that's a pretty good exclusive for xbox to get there right um a yeah. new game from the people who made you know what a lot of people consider one of the best competitive multiplayer games ever um pretty good pretty good yeah so. so basically it looks like a multiplayer game with story aspects like it's gonna have little story aspects like with people giving you direction and like why you're doing them like this certain thing and right it looks really cool um i guess they get the name like i guess the, the mechs are gonna be called titans 
Yeah. And I, I guess when they drop them down, it's called Titanfall because they're falling to the earth. Yeah. So, I don't know. It looks really cool. Um, it's coming out in 2014. Yeah. So. So. And. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Nothing. <laughs> okay. So, that was it for the Microsoft conference. Um, yes. Much, much better than the Xbox One reveal. Uh, they didn't talk about any tv nonsense or anything like that it was all about the games which they really needed to do yes um, basically pretty, it seemed like they got all the shitty stuff out of the way yeah at the reveal and then pretty bad the- technical issues with crimson yeah. dragon with battlefield 4 they really screwed that up yeah um it's really but bad for crimson dragon the thing that struck me about the conference is they made no mention at all of the two really controversial things revolving this system which is the online uh connectivity which we now know you have to check in every 24 hours i think to the internet for the console to work and the this confusing thing that no one understands which is how used games are going to work or lending games to other people this whole thing about tying a game into a certain xbox live account they didn't talk about any of this. Nope. <laughs> they were just like, oh, you know, everybody's like, that's the two things right now. And they made no mention of this. So either they're true or <laughs> they don't understand that people want to know if it's actually going to happen. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. I've seen extremely conflicting things about this used game and all that. I saw some article that said that used games will work just like they always did. And there's another article that says, well, you can't lend a game to a friend to use unless they've been on your friends list for at least 30 days and yeah and you can only share like you share like the digital copy of the game and you can only do it like once and I, it's there's gonna be some kind of restrictions yeah there's i mean it, 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 they would have brought it up you know yeah they, they, i mean they have to know that there's rumors out there um if they don't they need it uh, they need to look Get at the internet a little bit ass. more yeah they need to look at the internet a little bit more but um, if it was if it wasn't true, they would have brought it up. That would be the first thing they would have brought yeah. up. I mean, they would have brought it up right away, saying this is not a a true statement. Used games are going to work as they always did, and right. there's going to be no restrictions whatsoever. But they, but they didn't do it. They didn't. So I mean, it, it yeah. So it's it's either true or they just don't even know that this is an issue, and they're not they don't know anything like is going on about it. So they don't know the they have to well, address it. They definitely know. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, I, if they don't know, be then there's restrictions on it. There's going to be some type of restrictions on used games, on lending games. We just don't exactly know what, because it's right. a big mystery. Um, other than that, I mean, they showed some good games. They showed some good exclusives. Rise, um, Titanfall Sunset. is a good right. one. Sunset Overdrive. Sunset Overdrive. Um, the other uh, Dead Rising Three. Yeah, Dead um, Rising Three. So yeah, a lot of cool games, but you know, there's this couple things that are preventing people from actually saying this is a console I want. You know, right. there's the the high price tag. Um, yeah, it's very expensive. Very expensive. Five hundred dollars is ridiculous. Um, and these having to be online and have your connect con- connected to the Xbox for it to work is ridiculous. Yeah, it's and these use this use game issue, which they seem not to want to you know talk about. It's a big problem. You know, and uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things right now that they still have got to address. And if they're true, they're true. I mean, back up your decisions. Yeah, you, know, you if, made if them. You made yeah, it this way. Stand yeah, if you made it, it this way, stand behind it. Right. I mean, come on. So that was that for Microsoft. We'll come back and talk about it toward the end when we talk about the two consoles and how we think they stack up. Um. So the next two were third party development. Uh, conferences. I never did understand why of all the third-party developers, these two always got press conferences and nobody else. But, uh, uh, I think because like they publish more games, like they're like mainly they publish more games than. I mean, other yeah, people. they're big, but yeah. like, I mean, because if you like, if you had like Konami, like what they'd have like three games, or you know, they wouldn't really have that many. Like EA publishes a ton of games, and Ubisoft has all these different games they let out. Yeah. Um, so. But all right, so the first one was EA. And uh, the first thing that they showed was a brand new Plants vs. Zombies called Garden Warfare. 
<laughs> and um, it's a uh, it's a pretty quirky, interesting looking game. Uh, I believe this is the first time Plants vs Zombies is on console. Am I right about uh, that? No, actually, I think they brought Plants vs Zombies uh, the first, like the original, the like Flash game. I think they brought it to consoles. Okay, um, well, maybe this is the first one made for consoles. Right. Yeah, they ported it to consoles. Yeah. But, yeah. They this one they actually made for consoles. Okay. So they showed a gameplay uh, demo, and it looks funny. Um, it looks quirky. Uh, they showed like playing as different plants. Uh, it was like a multiplayer, and they were walking around, and you had like a sunflower and a big plant and stuff, and they were messing up zombies, uh, doing mm-hmm. all this crazy stuff. And it looked really cool, really quirky, <laughs> awesome graphics. I have to say, the graphics were looked really cool. Yeah, it looks like um, it reminded me of Team Fortress Two, but with right plants. Yeah. Um, and they had a couple of big bosses that came out, like this funny disco zombie. Yeah. That came out. He's like from the seventies. Got a big fro, and he's like dancing around and doing stuff. And they were fighting him. And then they had this giant, uh, like, colossal boss zombie, the that they were all fighting. And uh, it looked really fun. It looked. Yeah, I mean, it'd be it'd be and, it'd be an awesome game for me, me and you to play. Like, we'd have a ton of fun on that game. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, they said it was for. Um, it was just for Xbox. Yeah, Xbox One, and I think it's going to go to 362. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. So, it, so could it's still... a Microsoft thing. Yeah. Um, but it but, looked like fun. It looked like a, a good, quirky, uh, you know, time killer. Yeah, um, and it was funny how they, like, made fun of, like, Battlefield and Call of yeah. Duty. and They started like, off with, like, uh, the Battlefield asshole. intro. They had, like, the uh, <laughs> that Battlefield, uh, like, noise that they do, like, the da na and like yeah. showing that it was pretty, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um. But and then they had this asshole come out with his mask on. <laughs> yeah. They had what the one of the development guys came out with a giant uh, zombie mask on. Yeah. He looked like a total douche. <laughs> <laughs> he was very excited. Very excited. Uh. Very dorky. So yeah. at least to that's a combination for a very funny person to make fun of. <laughs> um. So yeah. After that. Uh. They showed Titanfall again, mm-hmm. but this time it was like a little trailer. It didn't even show the gameplay. So yeah. the game that they're publishing, they don't even show the trailer at their conference, which is really weird. Right. I guess they they thought that Microsoft would get more publicity, and I guess it did. But um, yeah, so they showed Titanfall a little trailer, like they just combined some of the different, like some other little game clips in it, and they just did in a different order. So yeah, not much. Yeah, nothing really new to report. Mm-hmm. Um, then they came out and they talked about the two new big engines that they were going to be running. Um, the Ignite engine, which is for the EA Sports, uh, is the new engine there. And then Frostbite 3. And they basically said every every game you're going to see from here on runs on Frostbite 3. Mm-hmm. So that's basically EA's engine. They're going to go with it. They're going to make all their games. Or uh, they're going to, I guess, the developers who are going to make it from EA are going to be using the Frostbite 3. Because um, we think it's such an amazing engine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I hope it's better than Frostbite 2. Yeah, Frostbite 2 honestly looked like shit. <laughs> it, it, it it probably is. It's probably much better. But Hopefully. We'll have to see. Because, so. I mean, Frostbite does have awesome qualities to it. Like, it has the, the destructibility and all that cool yeah. stuff. So you can, there's so many options you can do, like, you know, things you can do with it that make right. will make games look awesome. But, yeah. Um, after that, they uh, they announced a really like I thought this was like one of the most more interesting games that they showed mm-hmm. at this conference was which was Star Wars Battlefront, um, and it's being developed by Dice, so it, it's going to be a first person game, um, and it's going to be running off Frostbite three, and basically the the trailer was like this the snowy environment like the snowy tundra environment. And then the, you see, like, the one of those, uh, I don't know what they're called, those um, big uh, vehicles that they have, and it just, like, stomps down, and then it shows the, the logo for S- Star Wars, and it was just a short little teaser clip, but yeah, uh, it looked really cool. Um, and I'm kind of excited to see what they show. Yeah, I think, like, I think it's more they show good. Um, yeah. it, like you said, it was a very short thing, but I think it was just to announce that they're, they're bringing Battlefront back. Right. Um, and... Yeah, I I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. But they didn't give any type of time frame for release or anything. Um, 
they were just like we're bringing it back you know we're making it right and, um, it, and it's gonna you know pique my interest right um so the next thing they showed another racing game uh <laughs> this time it was need for speed uh rivals and basically what they showed they were like okay we're gonna have a race here we're gonna have a thing and these two people are gonna start uh in single player and mm-hmm. then it's going to finish in multiplayer so i guess the thing was this guy was playing single player he was he was doing a race and they raced for a little bit and then another guy joined in mm-hmm. and he was a cop and they like you know he entered into their game and he was uh chasing him in the cop car and uh they were you know racing and trying to evade the cops like you would in regular need for speed but the cop was actually uh, another guy jumping in playing multiplayer right so it was a neat little thing um you know they really seem to be focused this new generation on blurring the lines between single and multiplayer to have yeah, a, uh, mm-hmm. a fluid thing where if you're connected online at any point another guy can jump in and and be user controlled and be in your game um and they had uh they announced a need for speed movie that right. the guy from uh from breaking bad he's actually going to be the lead guy in it um, pink man right and they showed a little a little trailer of like behind the scenes filming it um honestly so, we didn't we didn't really pay attention to it <laughs> yeah it was we didn't even look we were like okay they're making a racing need for speed movie okay whatever so Um, the need for speed game it's like okay how many of these are they gonna make i mean before they start doing something different right yeah um but you know if you're a fan of need for speed it's all yours um (laughs) so after that after they announced the movie and the game need for speed uh they came out and announced dragon age inquisition and this is gonna be running off frostbite 3 and the like i don't know it looked looked pretty cool like the, it didn't look like the graphics were that great but you know I, I guess Dragon Age isn't based on its graphics like more for the story and the dialogue yeah the um, gameplay and... right so um, yeah so new Dragon Age coming in fall 2014 um, so Dragon Age f- fans there you go <laughs> there you hopefully, go hopefully this game will have an ending yeah and you won't have to Dragon buy Age it too. you won't have to buy an ending but knowing EA probably not um mm-hmm. So then, the section that everybody knew they were going to do, um, EA Sports came out, and the first thing they talked about was that they're bringing back NBA Live um, 14, and they're going to try once again to compete with 2K in the NBA arena. I don't know yeah. how it's going to work out, because 2K ran them off the first time because they were so dominant. But this is when, of course, they started bringing out all the athletes and... Um, these famous people to talk about stuff which i don't know why they do um but they had uh Kyrie irving out there from the cleveland cavaliers and the first thing they had this guy come out and he was rapping oh yeah it was the most was, annoying most annoying thing about ever. like dribbling and, and <laughs> bouncing it'll come back and all this stuff and then he's like Kyrie bounce irving, that shit find yeah, that shit you bring it back. back out and they're interviewing him and they're talking about uh you know how important dribbling is and how he dribbles and stuff which i don't know why anyone cares as far as the game but they talked about this new uh ball engine basically called bounce tech <laughs> a ball um, engine which is going to give you a a better like control of the ball you'll be able to like they said for the first time the ball's going to be actually controlled by physics instead of predetermined animations Mm -hmm. So you'll actually be able to have a lot better control of dribbling and stuff like that. Um, Right. So So basically every other game they made was shitty because there was no physics in the ball. (laughs) Right. It was all predetermined animation. So. Yeah. And the trailer was shitty. (laughs) Yeah. They they it was like 10 seconds and it was like Kyrie Irving dribbling and then shooting. (laughs) Yeah. That's it. it. That was the trailer. It's like NBA live. No gameplay. Just that. That was right. So after that, um, they of course announced their flagship, one of their flagship uh, sports games, which was Madden NFL 25. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess this is like the the 25th anniversary of Madden. Right. Um, And they showed no gameplay, just a 
uh, pre-rendered CGI trailer. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really funny because the guy was like, oh, now we're going to show you a trailer with gameplay. And then <laughs> no they gameplay. proceeded to show a trailer with no gameplay. It was... <laughs> Yeah, it might have been an engine, but it was like a cinematic. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't thing. like you him playing. Gameplay. Yeah, it wasn't a demo of like of the game. That's gameplay. Like, I don't... I'm a fan of Madden, and they're fine. You know, it's a new Madden finally on a new console with a new engine. You know, this might actually excite me, and might they might actually after all these years of being exactly the same game, they might actually be improving. You know, and. Yeah. I really wanted to see the gameplay. I wanted to see the crowd. I wanted to see the movements, and they just didn't show it. And I'm like, no. well, okay. I, you know, I want to know more about the game. I might actually pick it up, but I can't see any gameplay. So, whatever. So they, dro- they dropped the ball there. <laughs> yeah. And then, once again, they talked about FIFA 14. Hmm. Nothing new here. They just showed another trailer and didn't really say anything about it. <laughs> No, nope. it said FIFA 14. we're gonna show you. We're gonna show you some gameplay. No yeah, gameplay. No gameplay. Um, Once again, no <laughs> gameplay of FIFA. Just that was it. FIFA. Yeah, it's coming out fall 2013. Oh yeah, and they had a uh, freaking Drake. <laughs> of all people, Drake <laughs> the rapper. Drake, Drake the rapper comes like, out on stage and he's talking about FIFA and he's talking about all over the world. They know they play FIFA. It's like, what Why are you doing are you out here? here? Why are you here? Like, what if like what if you see got some guy come out like with a cane Drake or not this isn't your part yet <laughs> you're yeah, not supposed like, to be out here what 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 is he doing like why why is Drake there I I, I mean I thought they're gonna be like announcing another like a rapping game or like a singing yeah. game I, like he's that's talking what, about FIFA that's when like Flo Rida was out for uh, Ubisoft last year was like what is the point of this like we don't <laughs> care like stop whatever. it stop with these <laughs> fucking rap well, they should have had Beckham out there dude like. Yeah, bring like he a. He lives uh, in L.A. He's done amazing yeah. things for U.S. soccer, and right. they should have had out. Beckham come out and present FIFA 14. But no, they had Drake. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, amazing. let's bring Drake out. Like yeah. uh, he has no correlation with FIFA, yeah, but he plays soccer. Yeah. Anyway, after that weird ass showing up of Drake, uh, <laughs> they announce they have Dana White and two of the uh, UFC champions come out to announce the new UFC game that's coming out in spring 2014. Um, it's just gonna be a UFC game. Uh, talking about the new new engine, how like the physics are gonna be better. And then the guy um says, "Yeah, so my my chokehold is gonna be closer to you than ever. How I bring the guy close and I choke him. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> the guy's like, "Oh, have you ever wondered what it was feel like to get punched in the face? <laughs> and then Where, you, and even everyone's Dana collectively White, like, no. Even da- even Dana White's like, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never wanted to feel like it was." Like I wanted to get punched in the face by an MMA fighter. But, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um. So. Great. <laughs> great. A UFC game. Right. So then they showed Battlefield Four again, but they actually showed something that people really wanted to see, which was multiplayer, multiplayer gameplay. Right. And I gotta admit, this was this actually impressed me. This was really impressive. Mm-hmm. Um. They were in like a city. Uh, like a downtown part of a city. It looked and, like, like Shanghai. Yeah, it was a very dense, like, uh, urban, you know, metropolitan city. Mm-hmm. And it started out, you know, normal, like, uh, just, ba- you know, what you expect, Battlefield multiplayer. And, but, uh, like, they ran, they were in a building. Um, they, they were basically doing certain objectives and stuff. And um, they were in a, in a building and they set like charges in the building and like yeah. blew them and they ran and jumped out the window and they were like <laughs> running away from the building and they turn and look around and this giant huge skyscraper just like falls just collapses it looked amazing and it was crazy like we've always known that battlefield had like the destructible environments and stuff but now you're telling me you can bring down huge skyscrapers like can you just do that during a match or is that like a part of an objective you can do like yeah. i don't know it was crazy but it looked really impressive and yeah. of course they had to show nonsense um with this person on smart glass on like commander mode they mm-hmm. called it somebody who it was it was hilarious they were sitting there 
Um, they were it was a a, a sixty four player demo online. It was on it was on PC, right? Because um, it's probably only gonna have thirty two on console, but right. Um, they had somebody in commander mode who was sitting there like directing the team to go here and do this and everybody was like yes of course we'll do this blah blah blah. (laughs) they all stuck together and i'm like can you see this really on xbox live like do you know anybody on freaking xbox live who is gonna like take commands from some person and just do it like yeah no (laughs) this is not gonna work like unless you you have a clan of people who play together this is not gonna work yeah you'd say hey come over here and you'd hear shut up asshole like (laughs) Yeah, hey, fuck you, get out of here. It's like, and, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it was really hilarious, but I will let you have the big announcement of the conference. Okay, so after after they showed the 64-player Battlefield 4 uh, multiplayer trailer, uh, before the guy walked off, he's like, so um, we know everyone's been asking for this for a long time. You know, it's been a fan request for a long time. Um, we're going to give you what you want. And then they play start playing this trailer, and like you really didn't know what it was um because it showed like a guy tattooing someone and the guy's like tattooing an arm oh, and then yeah. he starts tattooing her like a face and then um i guess like she opened like it went up close to her face and it showed the tattoo he gave her and it was like the tattoo of the main character of mirror's edge so everyone's like yes yes and then they start showing gameplay of mirror's edge 2 so they announced mirror's edge 2 finally after like <laughs> I don't yeah, know years, years and years of like nothing being t- said about it, and uh, the gameplay looked awesome. It looked really cool on the Frostbite three engine. Yeah, the graphics um, look sick. Yeah, they did. Like the graphic it, design. Looks I really think cool. Frostbite really lends itself to Mirror's Edge. Like it really does lend itself to Mirror's Edge because it, it renders all these like destructible environments, but it's like it's really just like visceral. It's just you running. Right. So it's really cool. I th- I thought it was an awesome trailer, and at the very end, it sh- it said um. After they showed like how you play, like all the gameplay, you like punching people's faces off and like uh-huh. hitting each other, like hitting enemies in the face with a shotgun and stuff like that. Um, it says coming, and then like dot 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 when it's ready. So it's yeah. like <laughs> they never even said when it's coming out, but yeah, you know, big tease. It's, it's just really cool to know it's in development at least, and uh, they're actually you know gonna release it. So right, that was a huge announcement of the EA conference. Yeah, that was probably the big one. That and Star Wars Battlefront were big. Um, Right, yeah, Star Wars Battlefront. So, actually, pretty good conference from EA. I mean, they showed a lot of games, a lot of good games. You know, Plants vs. Zombies looks like a good time. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, again, Star Wars Battlefront, Mirror's Edge 2, two really big um, announcements that they're they're making. Uh, You know, Dragon Age, make another one of that. That's a solid game. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, they had their little EA Sports bit, and they're, all these celebrities and stuff that nobody cares about, but they actually showed, you know, Battlefield 4, what people wanted to see, the multiplayer, uh, an impressive uh, demonstration of the multiplayer. Yep. Um, and if they hold true to what they said, that they're not going to do online passes anymore, um, I think EA, you know, is, you know, I mean, it was, it was pretty good. And I think right. EA is on the right track here. I mean, if they... Right. If they make these games and they stop all of their ridiculous, nonsensical bullshit about online passes, about not putting endings in their games and making you pay for DLC, um, you know, if they just stop the nonsense and just make games, uh, I think that they could get themselves back in favor with the gaming community. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they have a new CEO. The last one was forced out because their company was doing so bad because he did so many ridiculous stupid things no one wanted any part of ea anymore so hopefully the new guy they have in there is a lot smarter and makes good decisions so yeah um yeah i thought it was a good conference uh surprising from ea they had a lot of variety yeah <laughs> they had a lot did. of different different uh genres of games like like the plants versus zombies the uh, you know and they had their of course battlefield fps and um their sports games but they had Mirror's Edge 2 and Star Wars. I mean, they had a lot of yeah, different racing cool, game. Yeah, and the racing game. So they had a lot of different cool games like they showed off. And uh, I was really impressed, you know. It looks like they're going to have a strong strong uh, run on this generation. Yeah, I think it was it was solid. It was definitely a solid conference. Um, and it wasn't too long or drawn out. It was it was good. So 
Yep. <laughs> um, so moving on. Next up is Ubisoft, and their conference start out was kind of a bang. Uh, Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains opens the conference by standing on stage playing guitar, playing some famous Alice in Chains guitar riffs, and uh, it was basically a big intro leading up to a new Rocksmith, uh, mm-hmm. Rocksmith 2014, and I guess the lady from Ubisoft came out and basically presented this as, you know, it's a game, but it's a way to learn how to actually play real guitar. Um, like they said, it was like the fastest way to learn real guitar. It's kind of like yeah. they're making it seem like the Rosetta Stone of yeah learning guitar, um, which is kind of cool. I mean, if you can learn a real instrument through playing a game, um, why not? You know, it's pretty cool. And they actually had somebody out there that was pretty neat, you know, guy from Alice in Chains is pretty yeah. cool to open it with so um, um, and it did it did include some connected bullshit yeah of course <laughs> I want did. this song I want this guitar it's like come yeah, on I can take my controller and pick it huh, yeah he's chal- he's telling stuff with the with the voice controls and all this and yeah stupid yeah uh, so after the after this after <laughs> this this rocksmith intro um, this you know the annoying the annoying lady is back you know the annoying woman Aisha at, Tyler Aisha Tyler she's back from, once again the the presenter <laughs> of the Ubisoft convention yes Miss Girlwood horrible um, she's wear she's wearing a shirt that says hashtag Girlwood on it it's yeah, like uh, nobody's tweeting that like oh my god <laughs> it's so bad dude yeah so she then uh, they start showing this, a trailer of Splinter Cell Blacklist which is what they uh showed last year I, I believe they kind of announced it last year yeah it was last year's e3 yeah and uh they they're showing this trailer and it was like very convoluted and you really didn't know what was going on like you heard all these orders being given like hey go over here hey over here you hear explosions gunshots and then yeah the, guy, the cameraman was awful they would pan out and yeah he kept back panning in. out and panning all over the stage and yeah they're like going down to people's seats and going down drill shirts and <laughs> Going on top, looking at the ceiling. It's like, what the hell is he doing? It was awful. I just want to see the trailer. Holy shit! I just want to see the fucking trailer, man. Even though the trailer was awful, it was like the wor- one of the worst trailers of the E3. Um, it didn't show anything yeah. about the game, anything new at all. Like no new gameplay. I mean, isn't this like going to be a big title for them? Like they didn't want to show anything they new for it. So showed nothing. They showed absolutely all. nothing, nothing except at all. a bunch of bunch of people in the crowd. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty bad. Yeah, it, was, it was probably one of the worst trailers shown at E3. It was pointless. Um, <laughs> so then they came out and uh, talked about um, Rayman Legends, which they really pissed a lot of people off with Rayman because this was the, the, the game that was supposed to come out for Wii U months ago, and then they decided to delay it all the way till the end of this year to make it for the other <laughs> consoles. Um but I mean, it looks good. It looks very mm-hmm. similar to uh, Rayman Origins, which was highly accru- uh, highly acclaimed yeah, when it came out. Um, looks like good platforming, fun, same yeah. quirky graphics, and uh, just a just a very original game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks good. It looks like a solid game. It's probably going to be a lot of fun. It's just the whole thing about it's what not, they it's did not with the, the release, and yeah, it's not the developers' fault. It's the Ubisoft's fault. So. Right, and uh, they didn't really talk. They didn't really make mention of it. They just showed the trailer, and it looks solid. So yeah, I guess it's coming out September third. So too, yeah, it's so. coming out in September. And then after this, they show the a game with probably the longest title I've ever seen in my life, um, <laughs> the Mighty Quest for Epic Loot. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, so this is going to be a free to free to play PC only game, um, and it's free to play up until level thirty. And I guess. The trailer they showed was, it looked like, like one of those like you know, movies that like Pixar or whatever, yeah. that you know they would make, and they they showed this guy that this I guess it was a prince or something or a knight, and they showed this guy that had like, like, horrible walking ability horrible <laughs> walking could, ability he couldn't walk like yeah, he was stumbling every, all over every second he'd get hit by an axe or like fall <laughs> off the side of a building or get hit in the face with like a hammer I, like <laughs> he, he didn't he was like the most unlucky person ever um and 
it was it was probably the funniest trailer of E3, um, but it was also one of the strangest. Um, there was actually a part where he tells this guy like to f off and eat a chicken and like <laughs> suck his toe. It's like it was like <laughs> yeah. the weird. It was like the weirdest thing I've ever heard, but um, they were yeah, cursing so, the hell out of each other and like bleeping yeah. it. Yeah, it was funny. And, uh, it was it was a funny trailer. It it was pretty funny. Problem is, I really don't know what the game's gonna be. Like, I guess it's gonna it's gonna be the mighty quest for epic loot. They, so. <laughs> they really didn't show what the game was gonna be. Yeah. So. Um. I I guess I heard that it's gonna like you're gonna take loot from another person's castle and bring it back to yours, and then you're gonna have to defend it from other people trying to take your loot. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's it's just gonna be a PC game. So all the PC people that love free to play games, this is gonna be a new a new one. So. All right. Well, there you go. Um, hmm. So then they showed off a game that, like, I think a lot of people thought just like stopped existing because we <laughs> continued to hear about it and never got a release date. Um, it's South Park: The Stick of Truth, um, the South Park RPG game. And they finally said it was coming out at the end of this year. And the surprising thing about it is it's coming out for the old consoles, which is going to be the old consoles by that Fail. Point. It's <laughs> going to come out after the new consoles are released, but it's going to be for the old consoles. It's going to be for PS3 and 360. And, I mean... Fail. It, I don't know what took so long. I think they... I mean, usually when that happens, it's because people drop out of the dev team and they need to get new people. I mean, I don't know. I haven't been following this game because, to be honest, I'm not that big on it. Yeah. But it it's finally coming out at the end of this year, supposedly, but for old consoles. Yeah, and so... I don't know. They had a funny, like, trailer of it. Again, there was <laughs> yeah. no gameplay. Um, trailer was funny as hell. It was a typical, like, South Park episode, you know, trailer <laughs> thing. Um... But I think the big news was at least it was finally it finally got a release. So right, and it's, I guess it's being made by Obsidian too. So I don't know yeah, what it's that's. It's being made by Obsidian, who made Fallout New Vegas. So I'm very scared that it's going to blow up my console. <laughs> yeah, it's going to explode. All right. Um. So then the next game, uh, the next game they announced was yet another racing game. Yes. Which we we're me and Josh were kind of confused because we we're watching it live together. And we're confused because we're like, well, this it kind of looks cool. It's like a warehouse. And we're like, okay, what's this game going to be? And yeah. then all of a sudden you see these wheels start falling. And we're like, oh, my God. We're like, another, oh, racing, another game. racing game. And this game is going to be called The Crew. And um, it's going to be an online co-op and single-player game. Um, it's going to be open world. And this is probably the ugliest <laughs> game they showed. <laughs> it has the worst graphics. It and was it, it was like the most boring, and 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 the funny thing is, they spend like fifteen minutes on this game. I'm yeah, not they even spent a lot of time. Yeah, we're not joking. Like they had these four people out there playing, and they're just playing it for like fifteen minutes. Everyone's like, "Okay, are we gonna see another game? Like this game sucks. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> gonna buy this. Nobody's gonna buy it. If anyone's gonna buy a driving game, it's gonna be um, like either for, like Forza or you know the games they know that are good." Right. I don't um, understand why they wasted their time on this piece of shit, but I don't know. They showed like you can form crews online and yeah. go similar to dry club drive club. Right, yeah. And you can go do certain objectives and stuff with your crew. Um but I mean I don't know. It's another racing game, it really didn't look that great. Yeah. It looked like kind of like a party game, to be honest. So I don't know. But it is what it is. <laughs> so no, then no they, one's gonna buy it. Yeah. So then they showed Watch Dogs. Um, they showed another cinematic trailer for Watch Dogs, and I'm I'm kind of forgetting what this trailer was because I know they showed another Watch Dogs thing. Yeah, I don't know. They the, just showed so much Watch Dogs at the uh, Sony one. They showed more Watch Dogs. Yeah. Um, and I think the Sony one is the one that 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 I'm remembering. With yeah, the, the uh, human trafficker. Right. I um, think this was just kind of like a little trailer. I don't even. I yeah. mean, I'm sure they showed gameplay, but I just. I, I mean, I don't remember anything memorable from this trailer. Yeah, I didn't um, write anything down on it, so. Yeah, so it's it, just another trailer, another Watch Dogs trailer. Watch Dogs um, looks amazing. I just, you know, we just wanted to come out. Yeah, now. they've just shown a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so after Watch Dogs, uh, 
they announced Just Dance six or Just Dance twenty fourteen. Um, and it's gonna have six players, which me and Josh are laughing because they're showing like the like a little trailer, uh, little game, like trailer on it, and they're showing the six player feature, and it has like six people like standing, in, like one, like, there's like a row of three, and then there's a row of three in the back, and the row in the front are like covering the people in the back. So how are the people in the yeah. back supposed to be recognized by the connect? <laughs> like, I, I, how is that even possible? But it, I um, don't know. It it looked really stupid like it's like next next year it's just gonna be 10 players so people are gonna be standing on the couch right. and then they were after all that, covering each other up and yeah it's like okay i like mean how far doing, can you go with this like come on i have no idea what the point of that was but yet another just dance so. i honestly don't know why it's so popular but well it's just another party game so hooray just, for just dance i guess but uh, yeah but anyway <laughs> So, after that, there was something extremely strange. They showed the Raving Rabbids, which are from Rayman. Well, there's going to be a new TV show based on them called Rabbids Invasion. And <laughs> it's an interactive TV show. Um, they showed these kids doing stupid Connect bullshit. The games didn't even look... They were like little mini-games. They didn't look fun. They look like it would entertain you if you were three. Yeah. That was about it. Like, it was not anything that a, a hardcore gamer cares about. It was it was a kiddie thing. It was a ki- kiddie connect nonsensical thing. Right, right. And basically, the games that they had were like, it was like a, a clip from the show, and you're like shooting stuff on the screen that don't mean anything. Like, it does, you're yeah. not even interacting with the show. Um it was like it was like it was like okay so we have quantum break that has tons of potential to be an awesome like game to go along with the tv show and then we got the shitty <laughs> shitty version we of rabbits. The rabbits i mean come on like i mean i guess if you want your kids to waste their time playing a stupid game then <laughs> or watch a stupid tv i mean i'm not saying the show's stupid but like you know, watch a TV show and then play a stupid game, then... It's going to be kiddie. It's going to be like a yeah. little kid thing. Yeah, That's nothing it. for, all for us gamers, so... And then, after this, they show Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Um, they just show... They show uh, actual gameplay of the game, and... I mean, to be honest, I didn't like Assassin's Creed 3, so I wasn't, you know... I'm not really excited for Assassin's Creed 4, but the... Um, the gameplay they showed looked pretty cool. The guy that was playing it sucked my balls. Uh, he yeah. didn't know what he was doing. Uh, he like ran past enemies and was like running into walls. And I'm like, who the hell did he get out here? Like, some guy that's never played a video game in his life. But uh, the game, the trailer looked really cool. It had uh, those moments where you're running from like explosions and you know, like, parkouring and swinging from ropes and shit. And it looked really, uh, it, looked, it looked like a cool trailer. Um, just not impressed with the last Assassin's Creed, so I'm not ex- as excited for this new one. Yeah. Uh, so. Um. So after that, they showed <laughs> these two trials games, um, which I guess are like dirt bike games. Yeah, it's a. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know much about it. Uh, they it's like showed... a. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, it's just, it's just like a little, like a party game kind of. Um, it's a downloadable game, and it's like a side-scrolling. Uh, dirt bike racing game. I mean, I have the first one. It's it's fun. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's basically what it is. Well, they showed Trials Fusion and Trials Frontier. The Fusion is going to be for consoles. The Frontier is going to be mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just showed a little bit of it. Yeah, nothing and great. That's kind of how it is. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the really the thing that caught mine and Josh's eye, like. We're like, wow, this game looks really, like, really cool. Um, I have, like, a note here that says looks amazing. Um, so Yeah. Uh, Probably the game... most realistic graphics I've ever seen. Seri- like, <laughs> not even joking, I think these are the best graphics I've seen so far in, like, a game. Yeah, um, ever. Up- yeah, up to this point. Uh, it's uh, called the-, the Division. And me and Josh were kind of confused at first because the dialogue sounded, like, really natural. Like, it sounded mm-hmm. like... It was like some of the best voice acting. If it is voice acting, it's some of the best I've ever heard. Um, but if it's, it, it, we're kind of like debating whether or not it's like the people talking that were playing the game. 
um, which is really cool too because that's how like a co-op game's right. voice acting should go, you know? Um, yeah, so the voice acting, I don't know if it's actual voice acting or the people playing, but it sounded really cool. Um, and then the graphics were just like amazing um, when they started. So like the guy's walking down the street in like a city that looks like torn apart. There's like glass everywhere and cars are just stranded and trash is everywhere. And they're walking down the street and then there's like a plume of smoke, uh, like white smoke, which was like the best smoke effects I've seen like ever. Um, and they go inside this like warehouse kind of place and they're like fighting these uh, these enemies, I guess. Um, I, I don't know if they're like in a, like a guerrilla crew where they're like fighting against a larger uh, um, group of people, but uh, they're fighting these enemies, and uh, I don't know. It just looks like a really fun co-op game. Um, amazing graphics, voice acting, or uh, speech options are really cool, and it's supposed to be an online open-world RPG. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen like a trailer of it, you missed it. Just go check it out. It's you won't be disappointed. Yeah, basically the premise of this game is that like they open by talking about how like fragile our world is and how much everything all these all these things work together mm -hmm. in a complex way to to make our world run like the stock market and um you know all these uh, our government and all these things work in tandem and supposing they had like an outbreak of you know some disease or something like that and one of these important institutions were to collapse and mm -hmm. They talk about how, like, if one collapsed, everything else around it would just collapse in, and the world would basically go to hell. Yeah. And um, basically what the your team is that you play as is, like, these, these specialized army people who go into these locations um, to do certain objectives. Mm -hmm. And that's why, for, like, the gameplay, everything was destroyed. Um, it's basically like the world goes into chaos. And... Uh, yeah. It, it's a cool premise. The gameplay looks great. Mm -hmm. The graphics look amazing. It's Tom Clancy, so the plot is probably going to be good. Um, yeah. Um, and it's a new series. You know, it's not Splinter Cell yeah. um, or anything like it. It's a new Tom Clancy, The Division. So this may be uh, an ongoing thing like Splinter Cell. I don't know. Um, um, yeah. What I want to know is what happened to Tom Clancy's The Patriots? Remember that the the trailer they had for it, and it was like it was like a trailer, and it was like this guy in his house, and these guys just come in and like start beating him up and take his wife and kid, and it was like it looked really like good, but they never mentioned anything after that. They said it was going to be for the next gen consoles and stuff. I never heard anything about it. I don't even remember to, that. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh by Ubisoft, I think, and uh, then didn't, didn't even mention it. So. I don't know. That's really weird. Uh, but the division's going to be on Xbox One and PS4. So yep, it's going to be cross-platform. So looking forward to that. Good co-op fun. Looks really awesome. So looks yeah, it does look really good. Um, Ubisoft's press conference was really not that great. Um, <laughs> I think the only good thing about it was the division. I mean, yeah. everything else was games we already knew was come were coming out. Um. A terrible trailer for Splinter Cell Blacklist. Oh, like, awful. Useless. Um, the crew, not that impressive. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, I have it written down here, that there was more iPad nonsense, more smart glass stuff with the crew. Because the host, Aisha Tyler, after the gameplay demo, she comes out and she's like, oh, I was busy creating my car. Oh yeah, on my iPad during this, like no one gives a shit. Like, dude, come on, what's up with the iPads? Like, what yeah, the hell? I don't, know. I don't understand. Watch Dogs, Just Dance, you know, Raving anyone... Rabbits TV show, Assassin's yeah. Creed Black Flag, all stuff we all knew about. So really, the right. only, it was pretty boring. The only good thing about it was the division. Yeah, and that's probably why they saved it for the end. So yeah, and Aisha Tyler, terrible in my opinion, host. Oh God, she. Every single joke she makes is the same joke. It's always a sexual joke. Yes, it's always nobody laughs. not funny. Yeah, no one laughs. ever laughs at her, and it's just not good. She's not a good presenter, in my opinion. Like at all, just, it's awkward. It's not funny. It's misplaced humor, and it's always the same bathroom humor, like that a twelve-year-old would find funny. It's not funny. Right, and it's like, 
I mean, it's like, okay, wouldn't you like have a little bit of shame? Like, yeah, you know, nobody's like, laughing at your, your jokes, and you're still standing up there making them. It's like, yeah, she just doesn't care. Like, she doesn't give a shit. Uh, two straight years of her not being funny, and she just it doesn't matter. They just continue. <laughs> at least Tobuscus didn't come back. It's just, yeah, that's that was a plus. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> so, that's all I'm gonna say. That's a plus. All right, so we'll move on to the big conference that wrapped up the night. Um, really a, a bombshell conference. Mm-hmm. Really good. Um, and that was Sony, who closed the night. Um, and the first thing they did was they got basically the nonsense out of the way early. Uh, they opened with the PlayStation Vita, talked about how it's continuing in its life cycle. Um, they announced that you know there's going to be a bunch of new games coming to it. Um, and there's going to be older games that they're going to that were on PS3 that they're going to uh, be bringing to the Vita, such as God of War One and Two HD, Dead Nation, um, mm-hmm. the game that ties into uh, oh actually it doesn't tie in it is the game uh, Arkham Origins is going to be on Vita, um, okay. and the new Walking Dead. Which I think it's called four thousand days, forty thousand days, forty day. I don't know. Some <laughs> days with a four number in front of it, which is they announced is coming out this summer. The next chapter of The Walking Dead is also going to be on Vita. So sweet. They basically just talked about the Vita for a few minutes, and then they moved on. Yeah. Also, they were fifteen minutes late. Um, I guess they're doing some type of demo. Or yeah, they something. started late. Um, the rumor I heard was that it took a little while to fill the auditorium. Like they were having, oh. it was it slowed up, it filled up slowly, so they just waited for everybody to get in. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then after that, they talk about The Last of Us. Um. As like one of the the games that are coming to the PS3. Um. And they kind of highlighted over The Last of Us, which is like one of their huge releases that are coming out actually this week, um, yep. a couple of days. A couple days. Um, so yeah, the, the talked about it. They showed uh, um, some gameplay of it, and then they moved on from there. Yeah, they talked about this game, Puppeteer, which <laughs> I assume is what ultimately became of that demo that they showed at the PS4 conference. Of oh no, I guess it's not because it's coming for PS3. Oh. Um, because I was I was thinking about that conference. That I don't they know had what the, the fuck that game was. Puppeteer. The the um, the yeah, people dancing molecule. with the puppets. Yeah, that was me. That was molecule. yeah. I don't know what puppeteer is. I really don't know. They didn't. Show I didn't. I didn't write it. anything down here. Yeah. I didn't write they, anything. They, they down just on showed it. it like puppeteer. Okay, I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm. It's probably gonna be a move game, but probably. I don't know what it was, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and then after that, they show a really interesting game. I mean. It was interesting in the fact that we didn't know what the hell it was, <laughs> but it's called Rain, and basically they showed gameplay of it. Like it was these ghosts walking around this town, and it was really strange, but it kind of looked interesting. Um, so yeah, the game name of it's called Rain. Uh, it's coming out in the fall this year, 2013. So yeah, it it kind of was like when it rains, you can see the people or the ghosts. Oh, okay. And like it's yeah. I don't. It looks interesting. I haven't heard of it, so I'm thinking it might be a PSN game. Yeah, I think it's an indie indie game. Yeah, because I go on GameFly all the time, and I know you know it's coming out, and I hadn't heard right. of it. Um, then they talk about another racing game, Gran Turismo Six, but this is coming well, out on PS3, not PS4. Actually, actually they. Uh, I think they showed a Beyond Two Souls trailer before that. Oh, did they? Yeah, because I have down. They they showed a Beyond Two Souls. Oh yeah, yeah. They showed um, yeah. It was weird. It was like it was uh, her doing military stuff. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah, it, it had nothing to do with the other Beyond Two Souls trailers we've seen. It was like her being trained to do military stuff. So yeah. I'm almost thinking like if you remember the first trailer they ever show, they were like trying to capture her or something. Yeah, maybe, it's like different different every time you see it. Like yeah, maybe different... they. I'm thinking maybe they learned about her ability. So the U.S. Army like captured her to oh, yeah. work for them as like an it, operative or something because she has this connection. Right. Um, but it was crazy. The trailer was like her kicking copious ass and like, <laughs> I, I it was crazy. It was like it was nothing awesome. I've ever seen. But yeah, Gran Turismo Six 
It's coming out on PS3, not PS4. It's Gran Turismo. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, what it is. Just a racing game. Yeah. Racing simulator, actually, is what they call it. Um, and then after that, they uh, talk about Batman Arkham Origins, which is a prequel to, I guess it's both Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Yeah. Okay, uh, so it's gonna be a, a, like the basically the start sto- like the starting of the whole series, I guess. Which I don't know why they do, but uh, and I, it's not gonna be made by the same people that made uh, uh, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. It's gonna be not by Rocksteady. Um, so yeah, they just talked about it, showed a trailer, and uh, showed like the Joker and all these different villains that are gonna be in the game. Yeah, it seems like and Black th- Mask is like the the main villain who like puts a bounty on Batman. Um, he's like, if you kill yeah. him, you'll get, you'll get a lot of money or something like that. Oh, okay. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so I guess, uh, for PS3, it's going to have, um, exclusive, uh, Batman suits. So I think they had this, um, what was the, what was the first one? It was like the a nightfall really... suit. Yeah. The nightfall suit crazy. Like, looked really cool. And then they had, uh, I think they had the the other one they had was in the Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. I'm sorry. It was it was the classic like 1960s Adam West Batman yeah. suit. I'm not sure if that was in the Arkham City. I think I saw one like that. Yeah, but yeah, so cool. so if you get on PS3, you get those exclusive suits. Right. Um. Then they showed that there's going to be a uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 PS3 bundle with mm-hmm. a headset. Um. Huh. Definitely not as bad as releasing a whole different version of a console, but yeah. still another bundle like in September. Like I just don't know. Well, I guess I guess it's kind of good because they're not releasing Grand Theft Auto for the newer console, so um, I GTA guess it kind of makes sense. You mean? Oh yeah, sorry, Grand GTA Five. Yeah, they're not releasing it for the newer generation of consoles, so yeah, we don't have fine it. and all, but like who. <laughs> Who who's never bought a PS3 before? Yeah, yeah is no, going to buy a PlayStation 3 exclusively for Grand Theft Auto 5 two months before a new console comes out. It's like, yeah, I don't who know. Just... who wants a headset with it? It's like, I don't know. I think they said it's going to be like three hundred dollars, and I I don't know what the point is, but I guess if you're in the market for a new console and you want GTA 5, <laughs> then I that's that's so. your bundle. That's your bundle. <laughs> and then um. After that, they actually, which was a huge part of the conference, they actually revealed the PS4, and the design is like a slant. Um, the top yeah. is like back farther than the bottom, which is I, I honestly don't like the design. Um, they actually showed the asshole that made it. Uh, he uh-huh. came out and he was wearing like just a white T-shirt. So yeah, uh, he was just wearing like a Hanes uh, tee. Like, yeah, okay. like he just came in a Hanes T-shirt. <laughs> He's like, okay. Yeah, oh, oh, I have to go in today? Okay, I'll come. Uh, <laughs> he just rolled out but, of bed and walked in. Yeah, so um, I don't like the design personally, but uh, they revealed it. And uh, yeah, and they sh- yeah, so they showed the whole thing together, the console, the controller. And uh, I honestly like the controller of this, uh, of the PS4, better than the Xboxes. Yeah. Uh, so that's a better design they made there. And um, one thing one thing about it is it's hard to get a, a you know a sense of how big it is when they're just holding it but there's actually a picture that's been released comparing the PlayStation 4 to the Xbox One in size the Xbox mm-hmm. One is huge i mean it's huge and the PS4 is actually really tiny it's like the size of the 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 PS3 slim that they came out with yeah um, it's like half the size that the old model PS3 like the launch PS3 model was um, it's actually pretty tiny, so, but they did like the same matte versus shiny finish that the Xbox One did. Yeah, like it, the color scheme and like the design of it, as far as the surface of it, it looks like the Xbox One. I was like, what? Like it looks like <laughs> the Xbox One smaller and like cut in half and shifted a little bit. Yeah, I was waiting for someone to be like, who the hell put this Xbox One here? Yeah, like it was weird. Yeah, I, I don't like the design of either console, but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's not I really am about... happy that it's small. So that's yeah, it's good. small. So I mean, you can't beat small over a huge console. You can't beat small over hard. Right. <laughs> or large. You'll never hear that outside of video. <laughs> small over consoles. hard. But uh, 
Um, <laughs> then uh, one of the guys from Sony Pictures came out and talked about how there was going to be exclusive content that was going to be offered on PlayStation 4 from Sony Pictures. Um, mm-hmm. And Sony Pictures makes a lot of TV shows like Breaking Bad and stuff like that. And he was talking about how there's going to be exclusive um, content you know, offered from Sony Pictures through the PlayStation 4, um, which is pretty cool if you're a fan of Sony Pictures stuff. If you get PlayStation 4, you know, you're going to have exclusive content from them, which is pretty cool. Right. But, you know, stuff that people really don't care about <laughs> if you're if you're buying it for the games. So Yeah, it's just an extra thing. Yeah, just a little extra thing that they threw in there. So, And then, they after that um, entertainment section, they came out and they announced a new game that is being developed by Santa Monica and this game looks really really interesting um, they didn't actually show any gameplay of it but it's gonna yeah. be called the, the order 1886 and it reminded me of like uh, um, I always get those names mixed up dishonored. dishonored dishonored right it reminded me of dishonored it's like style where it's like uh, me and Josh were talking about this it looked like um, old versus new Mm-hmm. Um, like an old versus new style, like new weapons, but like an old time like setting and fashion, like the clothes they wear and stuff. Um, but basically, in the trailer, they're like in this like horse drawn carriage, and they're you know riding, and then they stop and they get out, and the guys like got one of the people characters hears something, and then you, all of a sudden you see these figures in the the like the uh, foggy distance, and it looks like a bunch of monsters, and one of those monsters jumps at him and he shoots his face off and. <laughs> It looked it looked really cool. Like uh, the weapons looked really um, original, and just the idea. I mean, it's not really an original idea of like a setting and stuff because Dishonored already had that type of setting. But it looks like a really cool spin on it, and uh, yeah, I think it looks like a really interesting uh, exclusive for. Uh, is it's an exclusive? Yeah, yeah exclusive. It is. It's a PlayStation Four exclusive. Yeah, a really cool exclusive for PS Four. So yeah, it looked like it's it was old town old time London basically. Right, yeah, because you saw and, we actually did see Big Ben in the trailer. Yeah, it was like old time London, horse drawn carriages, all that. But then they get out and they have these crazy weapons, these like machine guns, and <laughs> this dude pulls out a giant like electricity gun and yeah, he's was... like going to town and just shooting all these crazy looking monsters and stuff in the distance. It was, um, it really was interesting. pretty cool. It was an epic thing, and it's a PS4 exclusive, which is good. Um, yeah. So then they showed another trailer for the new kill zone uh they they basically went on a a little uh looking for the word a little episode here of showing new trailers for all the games that they had announced back in uh the 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 reveal conference for ps4 Mm -hmm. and they started with another trailer for kill zone um again the game looks good i mean i thought kill zone 3 was a solid game it's not going to be anything revolutionary um, yeah. It's going to be Killzone, you know, but it it is a launch title, and I think it's a I think it's a good launch title, and it'll probably be a solid game. But is it going to be anything that like people run out to buy and stuff? No, you know. No. Yeah, it's just a solid one of their flagship. Yeah, it's a series. S- yeah, yeah. So then after Killzone, uh, uh, they actually showed some gameplay of it too. Um, yeah. But after after Killzone, they. Uh, <laughs> They brought out Drive Club. Um, they just kind of, you know, showed a little trailer on it. And uh, basically, I think this is probably the best looking racing game out of all everyone in that we we saw at E3. I would say this one. If I had to buy one, I'd buy Drive Club. Yeah, because I think that's a pretty good one. They they um, looks yeah. They 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 seem to have put the most time into it. It's been like a nine or ten year development project. Um, mm-hmm. They seem like they've really put you know the time in and i i think yeah i would have to agree i think drive club probably looks the best yeah it does um they showed a a new trailer for infamous second son and this was actually more descriptive of what the game's going to be like um it seems like the main character uh his own brother like keeps arresting him and Hmm. he's like do you think it makes me happy that my own brother keeps arresting me and stuff and um they show like basically toward the end of the, the 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 trailer they show the main character like like doing combat and he's got these crazy fire abilities and stuff like that um so i guess instead of electricity it's going to be fire and yeah it looked cool it looked like 
I think it's going to be a pretty good game. Um, yeah, it looks really interesting. Yeah, I, really? think, I think that's going to be a solid game. Now, that one, they said, was not going to be a launch title. It was going to yeah. be in quarter one of 2014, which isn't bad. You know, you don't have to wait very long. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, Killzone and Drive Club are going to be launch titles. So Right. And this Infamous looks really, really good because it has a good plot to it. Like, yeah. it has a really good ground basis of two brothers, like, like one fighting the the fact that his brother has these powers and has his abilities and he's in a position like where if he has to you know take action against his brother because he's a cop so yeah i mean it, it's a really cool premise and uh i think it, i honestly think it's a better premise than the first two but uh i think it's good that they're doing a little something different with infamous right yeah they're doing something different so it doesn't with the series stale, you know yeah you don't want to just be that cold um whole character and just you know blowing shit up and stuff so right um yeah so after that they show knack uh not really sure what this game's about uh showed a little trailer on it it's just you know i i'm not it, i'm not sure if it's a, gonna be a downloadable game or uh, an exclu- uh, a full retail game um i don't know much about it and, and uh this trailer they showed it showed another little i guess gameplay of it and yeah it was just a little uh, yeah um little thing from it for knack not too not too interested in this game yeah but yeah they showed a little trailer on it and yeah that's about, that's about it. it yeah nothing much um so yeah and then they like i said they announced Killzone, drive club and knack are all going to be launch titles and infamous second son will be coming quarter one of 2014 um the next thing they did was actually pretty funny um quantic dream came out and they did another tech demo that they called the Dark Sorcerer, and Brandon and I actually thought this might be a new game from Quantic Dream. Right. Um, we were like, "Oh, this looks sweet and all." So it was this, you know, it was a sorcerer. And he's like wearing a hood and everything, and he's over a crystal ball, and he's he's uh, you know, he it reminded me of uh, like Saruman in uh, the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He's, he's standing over. He's yelling these incantations, and the, there's crazy like effects. There's fire all around him, and the graphics are amazing and oh yeah and doing all this stuff and then and then the guy stands up and takes off his hood and it's the old man from the quantic dream demo that they did at the ps4 launch conference hit that they head that back. old man head yeah he they was him the back. sorcerer um and then like all of a sudden they like he screws up or something and they like yell cut and then it zooms out and you see that everything is just green screen like he's he's acting you know and then they, they they made it a joke like oh he's he's filming to be in this game yeah, like, like you know um yeah it's like so realistic that it's so realistic it's like an actual movie set yeah so. it was great it was so the graphics were unbelievable i mean um, I, I honestly i honestly think like it was so different from what quantic dream does like when we when we didn't know it was wasn't going to be a full re- retail game we yeah. were saying like wow this is gonna be really interesting because Quantic Dream is great at telling stories, but in a total different setting than modern day, right. it would be it'd be amazing. Like, like a whole different era of time for Quantic Dream. I mean, that would be an awesome, you know, an awesome way for them to really branch out and do something different. So, I mean, they should really consider doing something like that. Yeah, it would be really cool if in the future they actually took that and made it a game. Like that would be yeah. really cool. Yeah, honestly, they should. I, I uh, really think they should. But I mean, it, it was almost real. I mean, it was. It was oh, pretty yeah. crazy. Graphics were awesome. Yeah. So after that amazing tech demo, um, they uh, they show a game called Transistor. Uh, mm-hmm. And this game is from the creators of Bastion. And I guess these guys like started out in the living room of like, se- like there's like seven of them. Yeah. And then they made Bastion. And then after the success of Bastion, they're, they're making this new title called Transistor. And um, it plays the same way as Bastion, like a top-down uh, top down game uh, not really a shooter it's like uh, it's more Bastion was more of a um, RPG kind of right. but um, this one it looks like it's set in more like a futuristic type of uh, era and it's you're a female character and it just showed like some gameplay of it and like they showed it off and stuff it looks pretty it looks really similar to Bastion but in a different setting um, so it looks pretty cool I mean, yeah. and it's it's coming out in 2014. So. It's probably gonna be pretty solid because Bastion yeah, be got a... really good reviews. Yeah, Bastion um, got really good reviews. So. so then they came out and announced something that I think really excited a lot of people. 
um, and they talked for a little while about indie games, and mm-hmm. they talked, they showed, I didn't write them all down, but they showed a bunch of indie games, like, it must have been, what, six or seven? Yeah. Um, that they showed little trailers, little snippets for. I remember one in particular that looked really interesting was called Outlast. Yeah, I wrote um, that one down. Yeah, and it was like a, a, a horror game, but it was shown through the perspective of, like, a home movie camera. Yeah. And it looked horrifying, like, yeah, it did. It looked really, it looked really visceral. Like all these yeah. like visceral type, like Dead Dead Space is why it's so scary because it's such a visceral game. And that's yeah. why the name it, of the company looked, is called Visceral. It looked really scary, really creepy. Um, but then they basically talked about how they were going to be really indie game friendly and how they allow indie games to basically self publish. Mm-hmm. And so there's really no barricades as far as indie games. And they really made it seem like they're going to be the center going forward for indie games. And based on the fact that, you know, PS4 is really pushing that they designed this console to be really easy to design for. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's going to be really supportive of indie games. And that's pretty cool, you know, to I think that makes a lot of people excited and happy who like indie games um, that. PS4 seems like it's going to be kind of the the hub for indie games now. Yeah, it's just really cool to see uh, Sony like listening to their fans and listening to what people want. Like, yeah, they they really listened and they really changed things, and that's what I really like. That's what I really liked about this conference is that they showed all these different things that they're changing, and it looks really awesome. So after the indie game section, uh, they showed like like six or five or six of those games. Then yeah. they show um, a Square Enix uh, game, and we kind of like got really confused because yeah, it was confusing. Yeah, it really was because they're showing like we didn't. We're like, okay, this looks like a Final Fantasy game because the graphics of the game looked really similar to Final Fantasy, but we're like, no, because it's they're like in a house and he's like flipping and shooting, and it, it didn't remind me of a Final Fantasy game. And and then after like the trailer, they they announced the name. It says Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen. And then I'm like, okay, so I write that down. And then Josh is like, no, it's 14. I'm like, okay, 14. And then it was like, no, wait, it's 13. We're like, whoa, what the hell is it called? Yeah, and then it was 15. So, uh, I think we, and it was. Yeah, yeah. And then they said 15. We're like, what the hell? I, yeah. They announced three games here? It's really confusing. But from what I'm to understand, the game was originally Final Fantasy versus 13. Mm-hmm. And they just turned it into Final Fantasy 15. But How the hell does that work? I don't know where Final Fantasy 14 went. They just skipped it. <laughs> I, I I'm confused. I don't understand. Yeah. I thought they would have done it like they were gonna call it Final Fantasy f- versus thirteen, and then they turned right. it into fourteen. And but it was then they said fifteen. So I'm like, whoa, what the? F-? I don't yeah, know. It was really weird. I don't play Final Fantasy, so I, you know I don't really know much about it. But yeah, it was strange. So um, very strange, very confusing. Yeah. So. The next thing was a big announcement. This was huge. Yeah. One that a lot of people went nuts for. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is officially announced. It's officially in development. It's in the works. I think this confused a lot of people because the way they presented it, it seems like it was going to be an exclusive for PS4. But yeah. actually it's not. It's going to be on Xbox One as well. Okay. Um but it was really big for Sony to have this at their conference. Yeah, that's um, huge. Because Kingdom Hearts 3 is a is a big game. Kingdom Hearts has a large, dedicated fan base who's been waiting for this game for a long time. And it was really big for Sony to have the announcement of Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, at their conference. So, yeah, that was a cool. pretty big deal. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I actually was kind of confused. I was like, well, because they're showing like all the older like Final Fantasy games, like all this like scenes from the older. I was like, is this going to be an HD collection? But um, no, it ended, they're just showing like the past of Final Fantasy. And then they brought out Kingdom, or not Final Fantasy, my God, Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. Yeah. yeah. They brought it, they, and then they said it's going to be Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, right. Yeah, because every time I'm like, I'm looking on, around on the internet, all I hear is like people wanting Kingdom Hearts 3. So this yeah, is like. Kingdom huge. Hearts 3 and Half Life 3. Right. It's yeah, what so everybody huge. wants. And. You can scratch one off the one. list because Kingdom Hearts 3 is officially on. Yep. And then uh, here comes uh, some more Assassin's Creed 4. 
Uh, they show another. <laughs> they show another uh, demo of it. Yeah, it was a demo. And they're showing this demo, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> the thing fucking skips out, and they end the demo. Yeah, so, it keeps freezing. Yeah, we kept freezing. So like, again, another mess up on stage. Like, did they not test this shit? No. I mean, did they not test it? Like, come on. Nobody did. And clearly. No, nobody tested this, and uh, yeah. And it was so in, it's funny because it's in multiple buildings like all the conferences are not in the same place <laughs> yeah so, so like, like they, multiple buildings were like their tech stuff was all screwing up <laughs> yeah it was it was horrible <laughs> so yeah yeah um but they had some like it was it was gameplay and they they did uh um oh dave actually just texted me and said that final fantasy 14 is an online only game so I guess oh, okay. that's where it is. So this this is gonna be Final Fantasy fifteen that they oh, converted okay. from Final Fantasy versus thirteen. Okay. Sweet. Thanks, Dave. All right. Yes. Thanks. That's helpful. Very um, helpful. Okay. So anyway, back to Assassin's Creed four. Um, I mean, like like you said, I'm not. I still haven't beaten three because I got bored. Um, right. I mean, Assassin's Creed four like. After seeing the demo, I was a little bit interested because it, it, again, it kind of seems a little different maybe than it has been in the past. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a pretty cool demo. I mean, it was Yeah, like, they had a uh, lot of, they had a, two demos that were really cool, but. Yeah, it was on like, like a pirate town and uh, he was walking through and, and uh, doing all kinds of stuff and he had to run and escape onto a boat and uh, right. shoot cannons and stuff. So, I mean. Basically, it's, it's, basically it comes down to they're overdoing it. They're yeah, overdoing it, it with this. It doesn't need to be one every year. Like I can't remember. Right. I don't know of another major franchise outside of Call of Duty that, and of course the the sports games, but like a a game like this that comes out one every year. I just I don't know of I, any. I, and, and I hate. I don't like that model. I it's don't. It's just it's oversaturation. Like it's just it's too much of it. It's like and, okay. And the thing yeah. is, like they're all like twenty hour games. Like if if these were like six to eight hour games you know yeah. it maybe wouldn't be that bad but because it's so long and you invest so much time into these games like even though you're you're apart you're burned out like you're like i just i played 20 plus hours of this game last year i don't want to i can't sit down and put another 20 in again this year i know it's like and this is like what the fourth year in a row actually seriously? fifth i think because we had assassin's creed 2 it's been uh, 09, 10, 11, 12, and now 13. This is the fifth year in a row. And it's like, it's just too much. Like, we don't yeah. need this much Assassin's Creed. Like, just hold off and release the next one for the new generation, you know? Honestly, I, mean, I think... this is I, for the new generation, but, like, another year, you know? Yeah. Like, like, honestly, I think what makes a game great is you giving someone a game, and it's amazing, they love it, and they can't wait until it comes out, so they're just pumped for it, and then they get it, like, two years later. Yeah, like uh, keep people waiting, keep the right. excitement building. Like don't keep it keep it fresh. You know, it's it, it, after you put out like three or four of them consistently, it's like okay, you know, I'm getting sick of this formula. What's new? Yeah. You know, and what's... Ubisoft has a lot of other games that are that can carry them right now, like Watch Dogs and and right. uh, the new Tom Clancy. Like they don't need to be releasing Assassin's Creed this much. It's just yeah, it's, it's, it's too it's much. Ridiculous. It's so. ridiculous. But anyway, after that, they showed a demo. Again of Watch Dogs, um, it was pretty interesting. It, it it basically really outlined what the game's gonna be about. The main character Aiden Pierce is basically like a vigilante. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like a modern day Batman, to be honest. He, mm -hmm. you know, he he stays in cover and he uses this technology and the ability to hack everything to catch down criminals. But he does a lot of you know he breaks a lot of it, it, it's a lot like Batman. Like he. You know, he's not a superhero, but he has this tech, and he breaks a lot of rules and laws, but he stops criminals. And in this demo, he basically hacks some things to catch a human trafficker who, like, walked into this place, and he had to do a special pattern with his finger, and Aiden was able to hack that and get the pattern, and he walks in and grabs the guy, and he shoots and kills a bunch of the people, and then, uh, which is obviously, you know, Elite. That's not Batman. Batman doesn't kill people, but Aiden Pierce does. And but then the cops like show up, and so he's got to escape from the cops. And um, it was a cool demo. I mean, the game looks really good, but I've seen enough of it 
I, I want the game to come out and play it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but it does look really good. I'm still really excited about Watch Dogs. I think it's going to be a really, really good game. I think it's going to be a unique game, an original game, and uh, I can't wait. Yeah, and uh, I guess for PS4 players, it will get an hour of extra content. Right. So it's gonna that's be... exclusive for PS4 players, which is um, which is uh, big. It, yeah, which is an incentive to buy it for PS4. So right. Um. Yeah. So after Watch Dogs, they they come out and they talk about NBA 2K14, and they have um, I'm not sure. I think it's it's not it's LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron, it's LeBron James. James. Yeah. yeah, he comes out. Well, he doesn't come out. It's like a video of him, and he's talking to himself in the game and the guy looks nothing like him yeah it's the guy doesn't really look like lebron like the, the, the video game version doesn't really look like lebron james right it doesn't look like him so i don't know what they're trying to do there but um uh and when the guy when the character was talking his lips did not match the words so it, no, was like, it wasn't very good it was a very bad trailer um to be honest uh but yeah so nba 2k fans uh there's gonna be 14 and i guess lebron james will be on the cover of it since yeah, he's gonna be the new cover athlete. Yeah, so since he's you know featured in this video, so right. Um, then they announced something that I don't think a lot of people realized was gonna be on console. Um, but the Elder Scrolls Online is gonna be on PS4. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's also gonna be on Xbox One. I don't know. Um, but it will be on PS4, which I I didn't realize. I thought it was gonna be a PC game. And oh yeah, me too. I don't I think do a too. lot of people realize it was going to be on console. So that was kind of a, a a good announcement for for fans of Elder Scrolls and MMORPGs is that, you know, the Elder Scrolls Online is going to be going to PS4 and I don't know if it's going to be on Xbox 1. I tend to think it will be, but yeah. We know it'll be on PlayStation, so. Right. And um I guess uh the PS4 will have the beta first. Yeah, that yeah, they said that there's going to be an exclusive beta um for ps4 which i guess means it will be on xbox right um but there's going to be exclusive beta on playstation 4 to play first so right and this game's coming out spring 2014 yeah so the next game after l scrolls online uh they talked about was and this confused me and josh because we were joking we're like okay watch them announce a new twisted metal like because we <laughs> hated we absolutely hated the twisted metal they released in 2012 um yes and we were joking around, then all of a sudden they show this car like racing in the desert. I'm like, God, that reminds me. And they, and they show this He's guy like, laying on the ground. It's twisted metal, Josh. It's twisted I'm metal. Like, I'm like, Josh, twisted metal, here it comes. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> and it totally looked like twisted metal, like a dark art style and everything. But um, it was actually Mad Max. Um, uh, and I, I'm not really familiar with the series, but um, it says it's going to be made by Warner Brothers Interactive and Avalanche Studios. Um, I, I guess Josh, you know more about the series, don't you? Like, you know. Uh, well, Mad Max that. was kind of the one of the beginnings of this whole nuclear wasteland type of game. Okay. Um, that you know spawned games such as Fallout, uh, Rage, uh, these nuclear wasteland kinds of games. Mad Max was one of the right. the the starters of that kind of genre. So they're remaking, rebooting Mad Max, I guess. Cool. Um, which might be pretty cool. So, yeah, wow, that's cool. It had a big effect on games then. Right. Um. So then, I think this was this was the part of the conference that really Sony just took Microsoft and just started mercilessly pummeling their face. <laughs> um. So, uh, what's his name? Jack. Uh, oh God, what's his last name? Tretton, yeah. Okay. Jack Tretton comes out, the one of the big spokes people for Sony America. All right. And he comes out, and he doesn't really say that much, but he sticks a slide up, and it says, PlayStation 4 will not put any restrictions on used games. <laughs> and basically says, when you buy a game disc for the PlayStation 4, it's your right to use that disc. You can yeah. play the game, you can trade the game in, you can give it to a friend, anything like that, it's yours. And of course he says this, the room goes nuts. They do, like, like that That was like the one moment where the where actually the crowd was like the most responsive of any yeah. conference. I mean, they went crazy. They were cheering, clapping, carrying on. And, and honestly, for good reason, like 
this I bet I bet Xbox uh, or Microsoft shit their pants when yeah, Sony definitely. announces. But yeah, I mean, it I was mean, just it was so in your face. Like, here you go. We're not doing this nonsense. Like, yeah. just straight up. Set, whereas Xbox made no mention of this, and they're cowering from it. They're scared of it. PS4 right in your face. Use games. You can play. No restrictions at all. Nothing. Absolutely ridiculous for Microsoft. I mean, big, big flop for them. And uh, they're going to hurt in sales from it, I can guarantee you. Yes. And and uh, he, he also announced that you don't need to be connected to the Internet or online to play. So, um, whereas on Xbox you do, on PS4 you don't. So Yeah, and that was another, another slide. And once again, same reaction. The crowd yeah. went nuts. So big plus, two big pluses for Sony, huge selling points for them, um, and uh, really, I, that's I honestly think that's going to help them lead yeah. this in sales this coming up. Like, they could have walked out on stage and just said that, and left, and yeah, and left. Fine. Like they could have just came out and said, "You can play used games, and you don't have to connect to the internet. Thank you. Have a good day," and walked off the stage, and they'd have been fine. Like, and and uh, also. Um, also, in in that like section there, they um they announced that you will you will have to pay for online on uh on PS4. Yeah. So they kind of snuck that in there. Yeah, snuck that in there. It was like the last thing on that slide, and then they switched it real quick. Yeah. But but I mean, honestly, if it does have support use games and you don't need to be connected, I mean, it, it kind of pays for itself to yeah. be honest. I mean, and I have to. To speak on this because I've had a long history on YouTube of making videos and, and being very outspoken about PlayStation Network, about uh, paying for the online. So I have to be consistent, and I still feel the same way I did, and I'm going to be consistent in that I've always said that, you know, the reason PSN wasn't very good is because they were free, and that mm-hmm. you get what you pay for, you know? Definitely. And I've always said that I would not mind p- paying for PlayStation Network to play online if the service was good. Mm-hmm. And I stand by that. Um, they said it's basically going to be $5 a month, so it's going to be comparable to the Xbox. Um, I like the fact that it's a monthly payment of $5, so I don't have to drop 60 bucks at one time. Yep. Um, I can keep up with $5 a month. Uh, which is, of course, sixty dollars a year, just like Xbox Live Gold, um, and I stand by it. You know, if I mean the completely, service is upgraded, completely justified, completely yeah, justified. If the service is upgraded, if PSN is made into a solid online, if it runs well, if they add features like Xbox Live Gold, I don't mind paying for the service. Not at all. And I mean, considering and, and, that you're going to have to pay for it on Xbox anyway, right? Um. There's no, they're not really losing points. I mean, it'd be nice if it was free and they uh, upgraded the service, but I mean, really not losing points or gaining. I mean, it's just you know, it's kind of like a, a good you know, kind of a say us saying okay, cool. I mean, and they did say they're gonna have cross game voice chat, and um, and you can also um, play offline. So yes, so you can basically do anything on PSN except play multiplayer if you don't pay. Right, right. You have to pay to unlock multiplayer. But the good thing about PlayStation Plus is you get a lot of benefits in addition to being able to play online. You right. get a f- you get the free game downloads, you get automatic downloading of patches. So when you start your game, your the the newest patches are already installed. Mm-hmm. Um and early access to demos, early access to betas. So you get perks outside of just being able to play online for PlayStation Plus and being that the price is comparable to Xbox Live Gold it's really not that bad you know perfectly yeah perfectly justified um and uh, I think it's about time you know yeah the only thing that they need to do is they need to back it up and they need to improve the service right. um they need to make it much better because I would be upset about paying for the same bad service that I got before yeah, but um, just a cron- cross game voice chat is a huge improvement. Yes. And if they improve the, you know, the lagginess and, you know, just the not overall not good quality of it, then yeah. well, I, I think, think with golden. the money that they make now, they should be able to get better servers, oh, um, yeah. better security, mm-hmm. um, things like that, and they may be able to secure deals to get 
DLC and stuff um, with the money that they generate from this. Uh, they also announced that just like Xbox Live Gold, PS Plus membership would transfer mm-hmm. to PS4. So if you're already a member of PS Plus, you're good. You don't have to do anything different. It carries on over. So Really cool. Yeah. So um, after that big mashup of cool news and kind of, I mean, Xbox paying for online. Raping. Yeah, X- Xbox raping. Uh, they announced the game, or they, they don't announce it, they... They show some more um, footage of Destiny. They actually show, show some gameplay of it, some co-op gameplay. This is, and me and Josh were saying during this, this is our territory. Like, this game yes. looks like such a game we'd play. Um, it has, um, it's going to be coming out in 2014. And the trailer, it was these two, um, I guess it was two of the developers of the game. Um, they're, they're playing co-op, and they're in this, like, wasteland environment. Mm-hmm. And they go into this building, and it's like, it looks like a huge building that was, like, abandoned. It's all rusty and stuff. And when they walk in, and they, they walk into this area where it, it reminded me of Portal a little bit, like the yeah. the little area they went into, and then they start you know, like fighting enemies. One of the the main guy that they showed, he sucked again. Like there was another person. Yeah, he was sucked. terrible. He could not shoot worth his. He he to wasn't save his even life. shoot. Yeah, like he was. He he barely did anything. Like and when he would shoot, he was so far off. Like he was. Yeah. He was he, horrendously. He, he couldn't aim where the dam. <laughs> and he didn't look down his sights once. Um, I guess that's kind of due to him. Like I, I guess he's one of the original developers of Halo, so he didn't really do much sight aiming then. Um, so I guess he's used to just. Well, yeah, the original Halo, you couldn't look down sights. Yeah, so I guess he's just used to the, <laughs> the not looking down sights thing. But uh, I have to say, the graphics looked really good on this game. Um, yes. I really like the graphical style of it, and the game looks amazingly fun. So. This looks like a, a great title, uh, exclusive for PS4. Um, I'm really excited to see it. Bun- I don't think Destiny's an exclusive. Oh. Well, I, anyway. But it, it, they definitely seem to be more towards Sony than... Yeah, well, yeah, it's at the Sony conference, so they're kind of friendlier to Sony. Um, yeah, so it looks like a really solid title. Yeah, um, Destiny looks good. Yeah, so it's coming out in 2014. Um, and then finally, they announced the price point, and it, and you know, as if they haven't already beaten Xbox One into a bloody pulp at this point. Uh, yeah. They, they knock. They they basically send the knockout punch with the final thing, which was the price. Um, the X. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. PlayStation Four will launch. They said this holiday. Um, for three hundred ninety nine dollars, so a hundred dollars less than Xbox, because the PlayStation Eye, the camera, which they made no mention of in this conference, which I thought was great, amazing, is not mandatory and does not come with the system. So Make they're it, able to release it, it for a hundred dollars cheaper on launch. I think three ninety nine is a reasonable price. Mm-hmm. Um, great move with the Eye. Yeah, not not and, including it. You know, making it optional. Mm-hmm. And uh, so basically, that was the knockout blow. A yep. um, hundred dollars cheaper on launch, and uh, really good. I I thought this conference one e three. Yep. Um, I thought they were. I thought PlayStation one e three last year. Uh, I think they did it again. I think they were. They showed a lot of good things, a lot of good games. But I thought really better than even the games was just the news that they had about how they were being so indie uh, indie game friendly. Right. Um, yeah. That and then all the things that they did that or didn't do really that Xbox did like no limitations on on used games no mandatory online um, and the cheaper price and uh, you know the I'm actually even though I have to pay money I'm actually kind of excited now for PlayStation Network because yeah. maybe now they can actually make it really good and. It's funny because since the thing is only four hundred dollars, you can pay for four hundred dollars and a year's worth of PlayStation Plus for the same pri- for less than an Xbox One. <laughs> like you could actually pay for the system, and you can pay for uh, um, five dollars. Five. Yeah. You could pay for twenty months of mm-hmm. X of of PS Plus for the same price as just the Xbox One without right. Xbox Live Gold. So totally, so totally knock. I mean, and and just the support they're showing to their fan base is, you know, yeah. is is amazing. I mean, they're just improving on so much, and 
they're, doing, they're just you know still showing all these awesome exclusives and they're I mean you know they're they really took E3 this year so um we have a surprise guest we're about to welcome on the show to join us and talk about E3 as a whole wrap up talk about which console we think won which is kind of obvious I think at this point um so I'm going to give him a call and add him um, in hopefully he uh, answers all right hold on I need to switch rooms here because all right that's maybe. fine all right hold hello on. hello hey what's Let's up see. to an extent yes I do can you hear me yeah I can hear you I'm all right to see if the um, video will work do you see me or no no I just see your picture uh, yeah. but Dave is with us Dave is joining us Yay. for the end of now? three. So, no, it's... Oh, yeah, now I do. Okay, cool. Hello, Dave. Hello. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. good. So, Brandon, Brandon, are you back? Yes. All right, Brandon's back. Um. So, Dave's going to join us for the end of E3 here, wrapping up. Um. So, Dave, yeah. in short... E3 as 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 a whole, how how do you know how do you feel it went? Um, what are some of the things you're excited about about E3 games? Uh, you know, just your your general thoughts on E3 as a whole this year. Well, I thought it, I thought it was actually a really good conference. I mean, none of the like as you guys said, none of them were really horrible. I mean, like Ubisoft wasn't the best because they kind of slid over some games with like you know trailers like Watch Dogs and. Didn't they just show a trailer for Assassin's Creed 4? Or did they show game? Did uh, they do so, gameplay? Well, uh, I, I, know think, Sony I think I think Ubisoft I, showed trailers. I thought the demo was um, done at the Sony conference. Yeah, right. yeah. But um, like you guys said, the Sony one was excellent, and they destroyed Microsoft. Oh, and yeah. blew them out of the I'm water. I'm most excited. For, yeah. I'm most excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 because I've been waiting seven years for that to come out. Yeah, I knew you would <laughs> or at be. Least, yeah, or at least be announced. So that was probably my highlight, but I thought it was a good conference overall. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So, Dave, this is obvious to me, but why don't you go ahead and tell everybody which which console you believe won. Which one are you getting? Well, surprisingly to everybody, I'm getting a PS4. Woo! <laughs> surprisingly which to I'd everyone. Already plan to do and I'm glad that now it's secure and that I'm happy with it so yeah that yeah. is my purpose just and made the your second, decision easier yeah, yeah the second I saw Kingdom Hearts 3 I was done I was yeah. sold immediately well even though that actually is going to be cross platform but... yeah I, I noticed that today which I didn't really say but I guess it's not that big of a deal yeah well it's really I mean, as long close. as it's on what you're getting it doesn't yeah, exactly. matter yeah you know um, all right, Brandon, your turn. Wrap up E3. What are some of the games that you're most looking forward to, and what console won in your opinion? Uh, definitely PS4, <laughs> with all the you know things they announced and all their you know things they're improving on, and all these you know awesome exclusives they're showing. Um, honestly, the the game that surprisingly excites me the most would have to be The Division. I mean, yeah, just just the um, just the the, you know the awesome like story plot it has like this the way they introduced it and all the you know the it, it just I don't know just the story really captured me and then the gameplay of you know amazing graphics and all the voice chat and co-op it just looks really fun so I'm gonna have to say that game excited me most uh, yeah um, and, and also Mirror, Mirror's Edge too so Mirror's Edge too yeah that was a big one um, well for me I echo the same sentiments. Uh, PlayStation Four, um, <clears throat> and actually, in 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 some news, I guess, big announcement. Um, I actually, myself and Dave, have pre-ordered the PlayStation Four. Um, yeah, yeah. I actually went to GameStop yesterday morning and pre-ordered it. So uh, I believe Brandon's going to be doing after. the same thing in the future. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on doing it soon. So yeah, so. PlayStation 4, definitely. Uh, no question about it. Uh, I now have it pre-ordered, so I will be getting the PlayStation 4 at the end of this year. Uh, games Sweet. for me, there's a couple. Um, Watch Dogs, obviously, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. 
Um, the division, I think, is going to be really good. And actually, surprisingly, uh, Destiny, I, I'm looking forward to because I. Oh think, yeah, God, I forgot about Destiny. Yeah, did I, you I think, think that? No, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that because it is co-op and because the graphics look so good, um, yeah. it looks like a good time. Uh, you know, it's Bungie Def- doing something other than Halo. Right. Uh, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, definitely I'm going to add Destiny into my games I'm most excited for, too. Yes. Did you <laughs> think their about- demo was a little slow? Like, maybe it was how they were playing it. Yeah, they just had an idiot, idiot well, playing Well, yeah. the, dude, the dude who was playing it did nothing. I mean, yeah, his, his, his teammate like, was doing running. everything. Yes, yeah, his, it, you know. he even mentioned it. He's like, yeah, I did everything. No, it was funny because his teammate died because he was mm-hmm. fighting. So the dude who they were showing as first person went and killed the boss. And then he was like, oh, I did everything. It's like, no, you did nothing. Your teammate yeah, you, died you, because he was trying to kill the boss. You didn't even, you didn't even kill an, did a, an enemy. You didn't even kill a, a general enemy. Yeah, they, they didn't do very well. But it looks interesting. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. Um, so just some general trends from these this E3 that I th- uh, that I saw, good and bad. Um, well, forget that. Pretty much all. Well, not all bad, but one of the major ones: tech <clears throat> fails. Yes. Failures of the, I I don't remember an E3 where they failed so many times. So many showing games and like running demos and stuff. Like, what the hell was with that? Uh, just not planning very well i mean it's just bad i'm sure they planned it but they didn't you know yeah they just didn't test it out you know yeah, i mean you'd think they'd test it out you know oh like, yeah, yeah definitely but no they just didn't um no, they decided they're, too, they're not going to do that too much right. time yeah uh another trend overload of racing games oh my god just, i know too many games too many so of many. them every there conference had one of- like, there are always a lot of launch title racing games, I notice. Yeah, just to but show he, off the graphics, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Just to show off the graphics, they're just launching... T- um, e- even if racing. you like racing games, there's just too many. It's mm-hmm. yeah, it's an overload. Isn't every conference there's a racing game? Yeah, I know. Um, so, another thing, which we didn't really talk <coughs> about too much, but that's because it's really not important, but it's just annoying, was freaking smart glass and tablet stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Almost every game they showed, and I didn't even they bother writing it down because I didn't care, but they would have somebody doing something on a tablet. Oh, yeah. Just everything. I mean, it was like smart glass over here. It's like every time you looked in the corner, there's a guy with a tablet, like playing with the game. It's like, oh, come on, dude. Yeah, Nobody's going to do that. No, no way. Stupid. Look at that. It's pretty bad. Um, another thing I noticed was like another trend, which I think is actually, it could be good or bad. Is as we mentioned earlier, this this blending of single player and multiplayer, yeah, of being connected and having people join you and create multiplayer on the fly, um, seemed a lot of different games were trying to do that. I think. Yeah, they were. I mean, it, I mean, it was in like a, more than like three or four games, and it's like, I mean, I don't know how that's well that's gonna work. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be annoying because you're playing like you want to play serious and then your friend joins and starts screwing up your game. But I mean, you yeah. know, it, it's something we just have to you know check out and see. Uh, it just makes me notice that like, you know, a lot of game developers are switching from single player to more multiplayer focus, and that's you know been yeah. done slowly over the years, but you know, right. even more now. Even with the even with Titanfall, it's like a multiplayer single player game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Which is definitely going to be more incentive to buy, you know, PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold because all <coughs> every game is going to have some kind of multiplayer component. Yeah. That you won't really play the full game unless you can play online. Mm-hmm. Um, and the really the last couple I think is just showing the power of the new uh, consoles is that almost everything's going to 60 frames per second now. I think that's going to be the standard for yeah. the new consoles. Really? Really cool. I like that. I like that new uh, edition. Yeah, and a lot of games are moving to open world. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The Witcher, that was another trend. Metal Gear. And Metal Gear. Um, a lot are, of games uh, that racing that game. Weren't, racing game was a turn yeah. To open world. Mm-hmm. A lot of games that weren't open world before are now switching to it. I think because the new systems can handle. Uh, you know, they can handle the more intricate. Yeah. World. The the. The wider, the bigger worlds, and the 
you know, just they can handle it. They can handle more stuff. So right. Um, but I think that's about everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's it. Just about as long as last year's did. About two hours and two and a half hours. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. I want to thank Dave for joining us. To, thank you, Dave. Uh, of course. To wrap hey. up E3, get yeah, his and, perspective uh, on it. And our special country this year for E3 is Panama. So uh, screw Woo! you, Panama. Panama. <laughs> screw the nation of Panama. Yes. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> it, does that have anything to do with the fact that the U.S. Beat, royally beat their yes. ass in soccer yes. this week? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. So, okay. Well, double screw Panama because double screw. They got it handed to them in soccer. Add, add insult to injury. Insult to injury. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think by far PlayStation 4 has won the launch console wars. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, and I might, myself, I might actually be making a a separate vlog where I really delve into and talk about, uh, PS4 versus Xbox One and, and, uh, why I think Xbox really screwed up. Did I just hear Dave say something about a Wii U? I know. I don't know. I just, I think I heard that. I was about to say, we didn't even talk about Nintendo, even though they didn't need to be talked about. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Nintendo, yeah, they're irrelevant. They could suck my balls. They're, they're, as I told Dave uh, before, which he refuses to, to want to believe Nintendo and home consoles is done. They're finished. You didn't hear anything in EA or Ubisoft's press conference about Wii U. Except for Rayman. Man. That's it. I didn't yeah, I didn't hear anything about anything Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo home consoles, they're finished. Wii U is it it's so done. Like it, it, when PS4 and Xbox One launch, Wii U is gonna be a paperweight. Oh yeah. I That's mean, already a paperweight. It, it, it's just how it is. Like, the next game coming out for it is is Pikmin. I mean, unless yeah. you really <laughs> like first party Nintendo games, there's absolutely zero reason to get a Wii U. Like, I mean, zero. I'm sure Smash Brothers is going to sell and you know, they're pushing Pikmin as a system seller, which it's not. Which it's not. It's not. You know? It's Pikmin. Come on. But, I mean, again, and... it's the same shit, dude. It's yeah. the same games. They always Mario have this... Kart 8. Right, Super right. Smash Brothers. Yeah, they're making... They always, they always um... have this... Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> they, always, they always have this problem where they have all these... Um, games that are going to release with the system, like all these like Super Mario Brothers and all these games that people are kind of interested in, and then and throughout the year, like throughout its life cycle, they just run out of games to put out for it. And yeah, it's dude. I mean, and so it's many like, why, why would I want to buy a console that doesn't have? Games? I know it's it's ridiculous, but you know they just stick to those I mean, ones they, that seem they, to sell. They launched it as we're finally going to compete in the third party market. And yeah. no third party third party companies releasing games for it. They're not wasting their time. <laughs> Arkham Arkham sell. City, Arkham City Hardened Edition. That was it. Like, do you know how badly the Wii U is going to be outclassed well. as far as tech? Yeah. And this new, I mean, they're going to be so overpowered. It's going to be ridiculous. I know. They're done. They're finished. Handheld, sure. Home consoles. Nintendo's done. They're 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 toast. <laughs> they're done. They're gone. They're toasted. So, I don't All right. see them so, yeah. being part of a console war again ever. So. Well, well they, no. they haven't been. Yeah, really. they haven't I mean, never been. Not since like, like just in sales. The 90s. <laughs> not not since sixty four. Like it's just, yeah. But um. Yeah, so that basically wraps it up. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about Nintendo for five minutes, which is all they deserve. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They didn't even deserve that. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't even deserve a mention. But Dave over there, Wii U. Hey, so, you can yeah. play as the Wii Fit Lady in Super Smash Brothers. That's exciting, right? Oh my God! No, it's not. It's I'm not to, exciting. I'm about to uh, end his call on <laughs> Dave. Skype. Just cut him off. Um, that's funny though. That's wow. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for. Uh, listening to this very long e3 episode basically like no one came to the stream <laughs> but uh, that's okay oh well. uh we got you know we figured it out we finally got it to work so in the future when we stream we we do know how it'll work and that it will work and hopefully the fact that we're actually streaming at least will um get people onto the idea that hey we are streaming and when they hear yeah. in the episode that we're streaming maybe it'll click that you know 
Um, but when we do stream next time, be sure to come out because we'd love to have people uh, do live interactions, uh, get live feedback, and talk to you guys on, on the stream. So, uh, uh, screw you, Panama. Screw Panama. That's it. Once again, thank you, Dave, for coming on the show. Hey, Dave. Um, yeah, Dave. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this E3 wrap-up. And we will see you in the next episode where we actually um, talk to the Air Raid Lord, who right now actually is at E3. He's been on the E3 Expo floor, and he's going to come in and give us a uh, behind-the-scenes look at E3. Um, so if you guys have any questions specifically that you'd like us to ask him, since he was actually at the expo on the floor uh send those questions to us and we'll be sure to ask those to him for you um so join yeah, us man. for that episode should be pretty cool to get a behind the scenes look at e3 but uh, that's it mm. thanks Sweet. guys for watching i'm voodoo or josh mm. he's brandon or brandon and yeah. this has been voodoo's brew so bye stay frosty oh god and <laughs> here we go peace out